Yes, we do. I motion that the town of Rockport's town manager identify and hire a consultant to assist in team building. Okay, is there a second? Second. Ken, we just made a motion. Why don't you repeat it for Ken while yep. you're here? I motion that we request the town manager hire and engage a consultant to assist in team building. Is there a second? I had seconded. Okay. Uh, is there any further discussion? Hearing none, I'll take a vote. All in favor? Five, four, uh, five, zero in favor. Did we ever uh, exit a good Yes, we did. we did. You weren't here. There was a majority. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we did. Um, okay. Um, so we will re enter uh, the select board meeting of September 10th, 2018. We're you, have to, you, you haven't called this meeting to order right. yet. You'll have to just call well, us. We called then. it before and then went into executive session. Yeah, it's, they're two, they were two separate parts. All right, well, in that case, I'll call to order the Rockport Select Board public meeting on uh, Monday, September 10th at 7.04. Um, first on our agenda today is a public hearing to hear comments on an amendment to the Municipal Tax Increment Financing District known as the Commercial Street Municipal Development and Tax Increment Financing District uh, and to its development program. Uh, people might recall that we had an unofficial public hearing several weeks ago, um, but due to uh, incorrect uh, public notification, um, that could only be unofficial, so tonight it had been posted, and this is the official hearing. So at tonight's hearing, we're going to ask for people to speak uh, uh, for the uh, amendment, uh, for people to speak against the amendment, and for uh, people who have neither opinion to uh, speak to the amendment. So at this point, uh, at 7.05, Five. Oh, five. Uh, we're going to ask, are there any people in the audience who would like to comment in favor of the amendment to the test TIF? Let the record show there are no comments. Uh, at this point, is there anybody in the audience who would like to speak against the TIF amendment? And again, let the record show there were no comments against it. And finally, are there any people who would like to speak neither for nor against the amendment. And again, let the record show that there were no uh, comments neither for or against. And I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. Any further discussion of this? Seeing none, all in favor? And let the record show that the Meeting closed at 7.06, the, the hearing uh, closed at 7.06. Um, so now we will go back into our regular select board meeting. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. You on the agenda, yeah? All right, so we'll just run down the agenda and uh, see if we get some comments to myself here. Um, okay. Oh, and so as a final note to that, at 7.30, we're going to have to adjourn the uh, uh, select board meeting and go into a town meeting again, uh, but we'll do that precisely at 7.30. In the meantime, uh, just a quick comment on our public notices. Um, the town office in our agenda says that it will be closed on Wednesday, October 3rd for Maine Municipal Association Annual Conference. That is incorrect. It will only be closed on Thursday, October 4th. Um, dropping down to any agenda changes, uh, under new business uh, section J, uh, the vote on the general assistance, we're going to have to postpone uh, that again because again a public notification uh, was not done in time. 
uh, which is probably something we ought to look at, why yeah. we're kind of missing these right. uh, issues. Well, I think on this one, it was the fact that a public hearing is required for right. this ordinance, and, and it wasn't scheduled. Um, so the public hearing wasn't scheduled and, and therefore wasn't noticed. So. Right. Uh, <clears throat> worth looking at. Um, and going down then to public comment, is there anybody in the audience today who would like to address our board um, on items that aren't on the agenda? Rob, would you step to the microphone and name and address? Well, Good evening. Yes. Good evening. Uh, can you hear me okay on the mic? Yeah. Right? Good. Uh, my name is uh, Rob Iserbreed. I live at 40 Pleasant Street in Rockport. And uh, the reason I'm here this evening is to uh, discuss something that I noticed uh, particularly apparent in the harbor <coughs> this year, which was uh, moorings that seemed to be shifting location, uh, you know, based on usually when there was little wind and uh, boats were sort of pointing in various directions. Uh, it created some issues with a number of boats, some of whom were banging into each other, some of which were... Uh, People would call me up saying, hey, you know, my boat's uh, within three feet of another boat. What can we do about this? I take care of moorings in Rockport as well as uh, two other mooring contractors. And um, what we came to realize, what I came to realize, I, I thought that uh, the town of Rockport had ordinance language concerning lengths of chain and rope uh, in the harbor. As it turns out, it does not. Um, Camden... Rockland, every other harbor I work in does. Um, so I did talk to Abby about it. I thought we did have this uh, kind of uh, ordinance, but we don't. So without uh, trying to uh, make further modifications to the existing moorings that had problems, I felt that it was a good idea to talk to you all and perhaps to the uh, harbor committee at some point to create some... Uh, language that governs the length of chain and rope in the harbor. Would you include pennant on that as oh, well? Oh, yeah, that's what I'm, okay. what I'm referring to, basically. Um, there's, you know, all of us that work in the harbor have noticed that, uh, <coughs> that it's just become somewhat of, of a random uh, flotilla of possible colliding objects. For the most part, if the wind blows in one direction, strong, everything seems to pull in the right direction and it seems fine, but otherwise it's uh, a lot of, you know, doesn't take much to damage a boat. So that was my main concern and I think that uh, maybe we could look into that in more detail. Just a clarifying question, you've already talked to Abby about the issue? Yes. Okay. Yeah. When, uh, when was that? Uh, well, initially it was about a month and a half ago when I noticed, actually it was Last year, I first noticed the issue, but then when I asked Abby if we have any ordinance language regarding lengths of chain and rope on moorings, and she looked into the ordinance and she found out that we don't, uh, that's when I became more concerned because it kind of answered a lot of questions. To what I think what we're finding is that there's excess chain and rope on a lot of moorings. Uh, in Camden, they have a formula that governs the length of chain and rope and so forth based on the depth. Of course, it, it's all based on depth, um, oddly enough. I, I know that people are trying to do the best job they can, but I think if one person's doing it differently than the other, then it creates an issue. So, I mean, there again, the when, so it started last year and as recently as when? Uh, well, the, the concern was has been around for a number of years. It's just interesting that none of us really looked into it deeper to figure out if, indeed, there was any kind of uh, language or ordinance regarding the, the length of the chain and, and rope. And, and honestly, I was on the Harbor Committee for a number of years, and I always assumed we had that, but I, I was mistaken. So 
last year initially and as recently as, as yesterday yeah. well, or as last month? Or? Recent, re, what we've been trying to address, because we had to move a bunch of moorings, um, and some of the moorings actually haven't been moved for so long that they can't be moved because they're embedded in the, in the mud. They're like basically you know, four feet down. Um, so we've got issues with trying to make modifications on moorings that have not been moved for years. And then, of course, as far as chain length goes, I don't think anybody's going to want to make any modifications until they know what the rule is on the length of chain rope and in gear in the harbor. Because uh, if we're not all doing it, my, my, my take on it is if we're not all using the same standard, then we're going to have problems no matter what. Whether it be too much or too little, it's always going to be one boat coming close to another and so forth and so on. So that's really my, my uh, the reason I'm here is just to sort of point that out um, that we just don't have any language regarding that. All right. Oh, just a last question. When you mentioned that you had to move moorings, my assumption is that was at the request of the harbor master. Yes. Good. Yeah, there was a, a one particular uh, mooring owner wanted to put a bigger boat on his mooring, which was good for a 35 foot. The boat that he wanted to put on there was for 40 feet. It was thought that it would work, and when we did it, it didn't. It was too tight to another vessel. But then we re realized there was a third vessel on a Rockport Marine mooring that had such a huge swing circle that we really couldn't do anything. Uh, just move him clear out of the way and discontinue using that mooring until we figure out what we're going to do with this other one that had uh, taking up so much space that we, <coughs> we talked to the person who worked on that mooring. And it was agreed that the mooring needed to be shortened uh, or moved. Yet, it hasn't happened because, again, um, this particular mooring in question is also embedded so deep in the mud that it can't be pulled without snapping the chain. And which brings sort of a whole other issue, I think, to the harbor is, should we allow moorings to sink into the mud so deeply that they can't be pulled to be moved? And then we basically have objects down there that are uh, either they have to be discontinued or you follow what I'm saying. You just can't, you can't make any fine-tuning adjustments once something is permanent. And uh, something for the Harbor Committee to I was say the Harbor into. Committee seems to be the first place this should land, in my, my thought. Yeah, what I would add, Rob, I think that's very interesting. I, too, am embarrassed to say that I was on the Harbor Committee right. for years, and I guess I never realized that. But... Now that you've helpfully brought it to our attention, I guess what I would ask is our liaison, Jeff, um, introduce this into the, the agenda. It's um, at the Harbor Committee. It's going to have to be talked about, and right. it's, then there's a, it's going to be a, a lot of discussion because it is right. just for moorings going forward, or is it going to be retroactive? And it's going to be tough decisions. Just a, a twist of what you said. I would offer that you've already brought the issue to Abby. Rick, if you can follow up with Abby. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I will. I will it. follow up with Abby to have. Uh, if Abby brings it to the select uh, to the Harbor Committee, I will validate that okay. she's done so. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. I already have myself a note. Okay. Yeah. That Abby did mention to me that she felt that it was important to to address it. You know, at a Harbor Committee meeting. Yeah. I felt it was important just to let you all know that. Um, it doesn't exist as an ordinance that I know of. Yeah. In, uh, it doesn't. Yeah. And so um, going forward, I mean, it's a deep harbor, and it seems to me like it would be wise to have some kind of language governing that. And that'd be great. Thank, Thank you, you very Thank much, you. Rob. Thank I do Thanks, appreciate Rob. that. That's yeah. uh, very good. Okay. Uh, next on the agenda is the town manager's report. Um, does anyone have any questions about anything in the town manager's report specifically? And then we'll go into our quiz, the town manager session. <laughs> I on, do. The, on the assessing part, mm -hmm. uh, where we talked about the increase, mm -hmm. I think there was a third part of that, Rick, which is, was the increase due to the TIF, and, uh, I'm sorry, the better uh, program and better. changes, mm -hmm. the school 
The third one was the valuation of the town, if I'm... Yeah, that, hap yeah, that happened two, uh, two years ago right. and last, in okay. previously. So it does, it's not the reason for this impact. All right, I'm, I'm good. Uh, one thing I wanted to bring up is in my notes someplace, I think it's under town clerk, uh, was that we're ready to pull, pull a trigger on the um, uh, online car registrations. Uh, we've been, uh, Linda's been trying to get that turned, made active s since last Friday, and uh, we're having some issues with TRIO getting them to, to connect the, the um, online car registrations and TRIO, and she's been working on that very dil diligently for the, since Friday, trying to get that. It's, as you've heard, uh, getting responses from TRIO is difficult, uh, although she does have a name and a telephone number of the person, a direct person to call, which is helpful. Mm -hmm. So um, when I left today, she was still working on that, but. Um, is that, will that happen by the 15th? Yes, what I'm waiting for at the moment is for them to send an agreement, and I was assured today that the person I spoke to would see to it that I have that in my hands and written and signed. Is that an agreement from TRIO or from? With TRIO, there's an, has to be an There's agreement. a separate agreement. And they need money in order to do this. Mm -hmm. It's a new function for TRIO, so, mm -hmm. so we should get that. Okay. It will be on. Okay, good. So, and my next question then, okay, that's just for the on online car registration, and it sounds like it went pretty smoothly. Well, we haven't tested it well, yet. Well, okay, <laughs> yeah, but, okay, the lead-up. So the question is, though, do we want to pursue any of the other options that are on there? I believe you can do boat registration, dog registration. The, the person that I'm talking to, Deidre, from Rapid Renewal, informed me she was a clerk previous to her life with Inform Me, and she says it's better for us to do it piece by piece because you need to make sure one part is working before you go to another one. Right. And it's too, um, it's asking too much to do them all at once. We have an election coming up, which yep. she's very familiar with, and we have tax time coming up, and you, it's yeah, I'm not, definitely yeah, too I'm much. Yeah, I'm not saying we time. start this tomorrow, but does the board... You know, would Maybe you like the first to, of the year. It would be good Take to see step. us start with the car registration and then start adding the next most active activity. Yeah. I think we want to have some time way. so that there's, right. if there's yeah. bumps We're in the road. Just that having, have to, I asked that, once. Rick, if you would put together an uh, implementation plan okay. where we can look at a bar schedule and say, this is yep. when we're going to do car registration. We're going to do dog registration from October to whatever yep and we just lay out a uh, implementation plan okay great linda we we can work on that we can work okay on great okay, thank good. you but that was only my <laughs> two cents for it, well I, I think that's good and as i say i think the idea of having a period of time to get used to it on one thing is probably makes a lot of sense to me oh yeah um, yeah but yeah, to Doug's overall point i think that yeah. to the extent that we can have things you know registrations online for different activities eventually then i think that's a good thing yeah, yeah. Okay. just you know, one step at a time, but keep moving one step at a time. I did have a couple of things on the manager. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The, uh, the radiator replacement in the police car, uh -huh. uh, it's believed to have happened during the car deer accident, but wasn't noticed. Is that something that uh, well, the that, insurance company is going to take care of, or are we paying for it? No, I, I don't know that for a fact. When I asked, because that was my question to Randy, is is it a result of the accident? And he said no at the time. So this, that's new news to me. No, it's just so, something to perhaps check it, on. It was like the week after they got the vehicle back, correct, that they noticed it? Right, but that's what I mean. It was, it was, it was so close. insignificant at the time, I think it wasn't noticed and ultimately was part of it. So if we don't have to pay for that, the insurance can do it, and we can prove that it was mm -hmm. money in the pocket. And speaking of money, the other part is under the town office, the $5,212 dividend from MMA with mm -hmm. uh, regards to the loss prevention. Is that money that we can use elsewhere, for instance? I know that that'll just show up as revenue, I believe. I don't know that we're using it. Um, well, I'm just trying, like our motion coming out of executive session, I'm trying to find a way to pay for that 
with money coming back. I'll check with Megan. MMA. But well, that, it, that is a direct result. We've seen two savings <coughs> in the past. We've seen a savings and a reduction in our cost in, a, in this dividend check as a result of of the monthly safety training that we are doing. And, and I think the correlation between the training that we're doing also spins out to better prevention, so maybe we can find a way to have one pay for the other. Right. Well, in, in effect, it would anyway, because I think you're going to underspend right. the insurance line and perhaps overspend another line, and it'll, it comes out on the wash that way. What, and one of the other trainings that we're starting to do now, Linda's uh, leading the charge on that, is the um, uh, employee uh, wellness program, mm -hmm. which is beyond just merely safety, but keeping employees healthy. Um, can I ask a question, Mr. Chair? Can I ask a question of the manager? Of um, so well, when did this become a quiz? The manager. Well, this, is about, this is about your. This is yeah, in okay, reference so, to the report, and that's. Okay. Uh, I just wanted a little more detail on the lime kiln. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Work and mm -hmm. and how much was spent on that, and and was that anticipated, or are we yeah, over we budgeted that budget? we but we had a month an amount of money in the budget, and I think it was just slightly over what we had. Um, but I can't remember the exact cost. Okay, it doesn't matter. It's, it was in the budget. The reason I ask is Legacy Rockport is interested in the lime kiln and some, some other uh, possible. Oh, what? Mike's saying 8000 We Why budgeted 7900 <laughs> um, I didn't realize. So I, if I can bring that information back to Legacy Rockport, that's, that's important for right. them. There are other things that could be uh, done with the lime kilns if Legacy Rockport wanted to to support those efforts. Um, and I think what, what the group is trying to do is to find somebody who has some interest in the historical value of, of the lime kilns and, and is willing to perhaps help support a fairly major restoration, which as we all know over the years would be extremely expensive. And um, Mark, did, Mark did an excellent job on the, it's almost to the point of it, he did almost too good a job. <laughs> it looks too, <laughs> too nice. Um, if you go down there and look, but the, where he replaced the stones, it was a, he did an amazing job replacing the stones. And if, if I might, as a, uh, under the manager's portion of this, I, I checked today because we're trying to get the bylaws from the different committees updated, and I think we've only gotten three, and there's still nine that have not even responded. And uh, I'm wondering if, if, Rick, you might be able to personally get a hold of the because they don't seem to be answering Diane's requests. Okay. So perhaps you might be able to get a hold of them and encourage them to have things to us so that we can ha have it in the October meeting. Yep. Are there, are there any other questions about general goings on about town that anyone would like to ask? Maybe not a question, but a comment on the manager's report. I noticed that uh, the manager's report is now by department in alphabetical order. That makes it <laughs> much Thank easier you, to follow. <laughs> okay. Uh, we have four minutes until we have to open our town meeting. Uh, under unfinished business, there are three quick things we could do. Uh, the vote to place the recommendation on the library bond question, vote to place the recommendation on the polystyrene ban, and the vote to approve the meeting warrant. Um, what happened last time, we all agreed to uh, that these issues should be on the, uh, on the ballot, but we as a select board need to uh, vote whether we you know, recommend yes or no to the, uh, to the voters. So um, do we have a motion, uh, uh, a vote to place a recommendation on the library bond question for the November 6th ballot? In, uh, just favor or against. a question do we need to uh, we have under suggested motions here to place the bonds on on the warrant we already did that I think a recommendation we did just right but we have there's a there's a place motion no that's already been oh done. what she what town council said if you feel uncomfortable you could do this oh it doesn't hurt to do it again is what she said it's the belt and suspenders I, I don't think we're gonna have enough time to talk okay. about stuff. Why don't we uh, adjourn the select board uh, meeting and we'll reconvene the town meeting in three minutes if anyone wants to have a sip of water or... And then you'll, recon or you'll reconvene the select board meeting after town meeting. Yes. Yeah.
Linda. Linda. It's 7:30. Okay. Um, yes, I know. Yeah. Mom's already been elected as moderator, so I don't want to do that again. I'll keep an eye on the, the parliamentarian. Okay, at 7.30 now, I'm now going to ask the town clerk to call a town meeting. Yeah, Bob can do it. Well, don't you have to, no, to resume just, the... No, you're nominated. You're still, you're still in office from you're the last time. You're still in office? Because we had... Do I reconvene myself? You reconvene a town, a special town meeting. Yep, yeah. I'm here. We can be so we bring it back to the Do we need a motion to dispense with a reading? I would say ask for a motion to second to dispense with the reading of the R. You were already elected and last time. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to open the special town meeting to read uh, article number, which number is it, sir? Does I anybody know what this number two, is? I, I think, have, isn't it? Two. Uh, relative to the TIF district. Um, at a previous meeting, um, this moderator read the entire Warren article, and if there's a motion to dispense with that reading, uh, I'd be happy to, to entertain that. Move to dispense with the rereading of Article 2. Second. Second. Is there any discussion relative to the motion and second? Hearing none, I'll call for vote. All those in favor? Thank you. For Jeff. This, this is a public is a town meeting. Is, you guys get this is vote. public town yeah. meeting, guys. Okay. All right. Uh, given that, then um, we we'll wait a motion on the article previously read. Move to pass Article Two as read. <clears throat> pass or place? Hmm? Pass. This is actually the meeting. This is not to put it before this the vote. This is a special town meeting warrant. Uh, this is to adopt it. You will have an opportunity to discuss very shortly. So it's been moved. Has there been a second? Second. Is there discussion on the article? Owen Casas, South Street, uh, just because it would be a prudent thing and probably worth 35 to 40 seconds, could you just briefly talk over the TIF differences or how you're expanding and what you hope to accomplish with it? I, I need permission to speak because I'm not a member. I'm not. Yeah, let me get his question out of the way and then we can have an opportunity. <coughs> Yeah. Who would like to take, field that question? I think uh, our I think planner is our probably planner the best one. Oh, this to is talk our planner. That. I'm sorry. I don't know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. I'm, not, All right. I'm not a resident of Rock. Okay. So I, uh, I move to allow uh, Mr. Napower as a non resident to speak at this town meeting. Uh, second. It's moved and uh, seconded. No. Yeah, moved and seconded to allow uh, Mr. No. Napower yeah. is that what it is? to speak, who is a non resident. Um, is there any, to spell it. It's been mo moved, it's been seconded. Bill. Any discussion on that question? Hearing not, all those in favor, allowing him to speak. Thank you. Mr. Napier, would you like to come up and speak? Were there any against? No. <laughs> um, there are, this amendment, it, it deals with three things. Uh, the first is that it will uh, extend the existing commercial street TIF from 20 years to 30 years on that. The second thing, it amends the work plan which designates how we use potentially the TIF money um, to include the uh, SUR extension on Route 1 from Sea Light to basically near the hospital. It commonly referred to as the last phase of the SUR expansion on Route 1. And then the third thing is that it includes additional properties uh, along Route 1 in the vicinity of where the SUR would be um, expanded into the TIF district. The thinking is, is that since we derive income uh, from expansions in the TIF, there were a couple of properties <coughs> that were selected, speculating that they may expand when they have the sewer. So they would then be added in the t into the TIF district for the remaining uh, approximately 12 years, two years on the existing, and then the additional 10. And that's basically uh, what it does. Okay. Is there any questions from that or clarifications? I do have a question that, that I don't think was answered last time. How many properties along that Route 1 corridor will subsequently be 
utilizing it and of those not utilizing it uh, because their systems are in place. In place, yeah. We what? Yeah, go ahead. What if any fee will be assessed them because it goes by their property, and okay. how much revenue will be generated? From that. We haven't done the outreach yet to see exactly who will connect. Um, and some of that is we're waiting for the engineering to be completed. They'll do some of that legwork for us because they will uh, contact each of the property owners to identify where a stub should be located for either immediate or potential use. And then into your question of the fee, Ken, can I ask you to answer that? You're, you're more familiar with yeah, that. Yeah, the, uh, by the sewer ordinance, if the sewer goes by your property, you will pay the, uh, what's called now the debt service and capital improvement fee, yep. which I believe is, I think it's currently $48 a quarter. Um, and that, so times four is, you know, something shy of $200. And that's a fee for the potential use of the sewer. The idea is that it increases the value of your property if it goes by. So if you don't hook up, then there are no user fees. If you hook to the sewer, then your, your water usage is monitored. But you still you pay, pay a fee that. regardless of, because it goes by your property. You pay the debt so user and capital maintenance fee. Worst case scenario, what. nobody hooks up. How much revenue, roughly? Oh, oh I, um, I'm assuming maybe... Rick, about maybe 60 properties total, maybe, if that's, is that a yeah. total on both sides? It'll be that times Somewhere times between a year. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. there's some vacant properties yeah. there, so maybe at a maximum. Yeah. The revenue seven. from the uh, capital maintenance and debt service fee is fairly minor in the grand scheme of yeah. things. Um, the, the true revenue will come is, is if people hook up hook to up. it. Yep. Yeah. And also then you get the increase in value of the property, which then funnels into the TIF account, right. which we can then yeah. use for... We had speculated there were a couple of businesses there that will certainly benefit from a not not necessarily all um, economic, you know, commercial activities, but, what, but... Bill, one of the issues, as I remember, uh, one of the revenue sources is we have TIF revenues that are exceeding our ability to spend it now, and so those additional ch TIF re revenues are going to continue to go in the, the revenues that are going in now will continue into the future going into that uh, TIF fund so we'll have n almost enough money to pay for the bond yes. moving forward uh, for most of the 10 years of the, uh, the 20 years of the bond it's the um, and that's yeah. that's one of the reasons that one of the um, actions of this article is to extend the life of the TIF district yeah. in time yeah. so that we can continue one. to capture that money and help pay for this yeah. extension. Yeah. We're also going to use the TIF funds as leverage for, for grants. Mm -hmm. We received a small one already uh, for 250000 and we're going to look for a much larger one coming in the next coming mo months between 800000 and a million dollars. So that will help reduce that price significantly. Does that answer? Keep you? writing. Pardon? No, that's good. Keep yeah. writing. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah <laughs> Keep yeah, doing yeah. your grant stuff. Yeah. Thank you. Is there any other discussion rel relative to the article? <clears throat> it's moved and seconded. Is there any discussion from the board? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor? Anyone opposed? The article passes. Town. Special town meeting is closed. Uh, Bob, I want to thank you personally and apologize to you for your coming here tonight to do this again through our oversight. Uh, I realize your time to you is valuable, and I'm sorry. That it, that it is. That it is. <laughs> I'm willing you. to serve the town. Thank you. Um, it I was know. unfortunate that I wasted my time last meeting. So. Yes. All right. Thank you. You're a good soldier. Thank you. Now, at this point, we go back we open the select <laughs> board meeting, and we're going to go to unfinished business. And since we're not under any uh, constraints right now, uh, we'll go to item A, which is discussion and a vote on the future use of a, a possible future use of a consent agenda. And I'm going to ask Deborah to lead this discussion, uh, although I initially brought it up. She has been a real champion. so. Uh, let her have her say. Thanks, Doug. Um, you. As you recall, at the July 9th uh, board meeting, uh, we discussed the possibility of 
using consent agendas, the idea, of course, is not to preclude discussion among the board or um, by the public, but simply to make our board meetings more efficient on those things that really don't need any substantive discussion. Um, some concerns were raised at that meeting about the use of consent agendas in the government context, and perhaps that was a reason why we shouldn't be using them. So what I did was went, I went back and did the research and have produced materials that show that consent agendas are used throughout by municipal governments throughout the country. They're included in handbooks that's, that states have for their municipalities. Um, in just a Google search shows that in over 20 um, towns and counties um, in Maine, uh, they use consent agendas. I probably could have, you know, gone on further than that, but I found over 20 and I thought that was probably pretty, en pretty, pretty much enough to make my point. Those towns include Camden, Rockland, Next County Commission, um, various Maine school districts, various Maine state commissions. So. Um, there's widespread use of consent agendas. Uh, it's not a novel idea, and I would propose, uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions, but I would propose that the board consider adoption of the use of consent agendas at their meeting. Um, and as part of that, uh, <coughs> I did ask uh, to be included in our packet a copy of what tonight's uh, entire agenda would look like if we included uh, a con consent agenda. And so you'll see in your packet here, they did up a, uh, an example with um, uh, the red portions highlighted. Uh, I would point out that if we did have a consent agenda, we would have to ask that the vote to adopt general assistance ordinance be removed because that's right. not relevant to tonight's discussion because of aforementioned conditions. So. Additionally, I think the flowers planted at the post office being donated by Plants Unlimited, um, that item would have gone on there, but I think at the time that you did this piece, that wasn't on the agenda, or else right. it would have been an additional item. Okay. <clears throat> Real quick, Doug, should we make sure that uh, the example is shown on screen? That's not it. Yeah, I don't know if he's going to be able to find it. It's under he's, the manager's comments of the he's, uh, he's going to have trouble finding it i think by the way i did have a conversation just um impromptu conversation at a social event with bob falcioni the chairman of the camden select board and um he mentioned that they've been uh using consent agendas for uh, a while that he he actually initiated their use and he said it's been non-controversial it's worked well it definitely does shorten the meetings okay uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll play devil's advocate here because this is an issue that I, you know, I'll go with what the board <laughs> wants to go, but the, the negative part of it I see is uh, even the appearance of, you know, not encouraging discussion about an item I, is a concern for me. I think as I've gone through my years on the board, yes, there are definitely items that um, from time to time we go through and we, we pass with no discussion and I understand that. But every once in a while there's something that we anticipate that might not, that might not have any discussion but it does uh, or, or engenders a comment from the public. Um, and I'm a little concerned that by using a consent agenda that we may send a message to the public that we're not interested in discussion on those items if they have something to talk about. Um, so I, I, for that reason I, I still am hesitant uh, about the idea and I think we I'm all for efficient meetings don't get me wrong um, but on the other hand you know we're here to do the people's business and if we have to stay an extra 10 or 15 minutes to do the people's business then I think that that's a good thing I would I would echo that Ken I mean I I mean when you look at what you know under four the proposed uh, consent agenda items if they were allowed currently to be there. I mean, how much time are those going to take? Um, you know, so you're assuming that the con consent agenda, there's not going to be any conversation. I mean, I mean I'm, I'm for um, having a little conversation. I don't think it'll take that much more time. But 
I think the concern is, is when you have um, agendas, and today's tonight's agenda is not a very good example, but when you have agendas where you have resignations and you have all kinds of, you know, committee um, appointments that you're just, or, or, or just, just confirmation type of items. I mean, the acknowledgement of the plants to the town, it's great that, you know, Plants Unlimited did this and it doesn't stop us from acknowledging it. Um, but to have to have it as a separate agenda item, and I've been at meetings before I was elected where you guys would have, you know, 20 things or 15 things that were really not substantive items. And the problem is, in my view, respectfully, is that when one person talks about something, then sometimes it leads other people to think that they have to say something. And then, you know, you pile on, and then all of a sudden what should have been uh, something that could have been accomplished in a couple of minutes um, then takes 20 minutes. And there are, there are commentaries out there that it does, it does shorten meetings anywhere from 15 minutes to a half an hour. Um, and the idea is not to forestall public comment or our comment. The idea is to use the public's time um, usefully as well as ours. You know, you're not really encouraging the public to come to your meetings when they have to sit through, as I have experienced, and many other people have sitting in the, in the chairs there, you have to sit through and listen to the board go through, you know, 20 minutes or a half an hour, what I consider to be pretty non-substantive stuff in order to get to why they're there. So I think it's frankly a matter of respect for our own residents and their time. If I could weigh in. The use of a consent agenda, you could have the consent agenda on the agenda, as it might be proposed now, and there could be nothing in there in any given week or any given meeting. I think what would be important, <clears throat> how this could be successful is that as our bylaws state and the charter states, the, the chairman of the select board and the town manager develop the agenda with the proper careful selection of the of the items that could be on the consent agenda being the straightforward stuff uh, that we give it a try you can always change it you know if and again tonight's agenda is not probably the best example because there's there's some good stuff in here that does require discussion <clears throat> but there may be some things in future meetings that are straightforward Either we've talked about it in past select board meetings or it's just administrative tasks to approve it that we, we give it a try. The chairman and the town manager co-develop the agenda. They can choose what goes under the selected uh, consent portion and what does not. But importantly, any select board member or any member of the public who believes it should come off of the consent agenda because it needs to be discussed absolutely has the ability to do that. During the meeting. That's right. Right. Okay. That, I want it to be yeah. clear about During that. the meeting. Yes, that's the way it works. And it's not just the select board, but if No, it's you know. absolutely the public. So when you ask for um, agenda changes, that includes things that anyone in the public would like to remove from the consent agenda. Or any one of us. Wouldn't that, wouldn't that come up when we take our vote on the consent agenda and there's asked for conversation? Then somebody from the audience could get up and say, I want to talk about B. You, usually um, what I've seen is that the, um, when it gets to agenda changes, that's when a board member or a member of the public will, will raise their hand and say, you know, it's typically a board member, will raise their hand you know, and say, I'd like to remove such and such from the consent agenda because somebody in the audience wants to speak about that. Yeah, in my research, that's what that's, that's where it's usually placed. That's yeah. that's how it usually happens. Um, so. I think with that, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Oh, I, I think with that work process, the ability to handle mm -hmm. exceptions, the ability to pull things mm -hmm. off, the ability of the and the responsibility of the chairman and the town manager to develop the agenda, that it could work. So, a hypothetical then, if somebody in the audience comes to talk about a specific item that's on the consent agenda they can request to have that item removed. Mm -hmm. When then would that item come up in the, in the flow of the meeting? Under new we, business? It would when in new business? 
because that's right now the member of the public, if that item is on the agenda and it's far down the list, they have the option to say, well, I know that's not going to come up for an hour or so. I'm going to wait. I'm going to have my dinner and I'm going to come to the meeting at 8 o'clock when I know the item that I'm interested in is going to come up. If we adopt this procedure, then that person has to be here at the beginning of the meeting to pull that off the consent agenda and then wait for it to come up. Or, or talk to a board member ahead of time. But e there, there are two steps to the process still. Is in order to change your bylaws, you have to, you, you know, you, you've got to, further on here, you're going to be talking about your bylaws. In order to change the bylaws, you have to have a public hearing on that. So, and then you'll have a public hearing, and then presumably you could say, we're going to have a public hearing, and then at a subsequent meeting, we're going to adopt the changes in the bylaws. Uh, but you could, you could create the bylaws that would answer those questions for you, for you Ken, is how that happens. And playing off of Ken's, are you, if you have, after the uh, consent agenda items, you have 10 other things of substance, do they become number 11? So they still have to wait, regardless of, you know, uh, which is an inconvenience. Or you make it, I'm you, sorry. No, I was going to say, do you take it up at that moment? Or do you bump them to the bottom of the list? That, that's something the board could decide. You could, you could right. make a second portion of the consent agenda agenda item be discussion of items pulled off the consent agenda. Yeah, yeah. and at that time, I don't. You know. Right, and then people wouldn't have to leave for an hour to go for dinner. The chair awaits a motion or no motion. <clears throat> And say you're the one that sets the agenda. Bring it to us next time. We'll tell you whether we like it. <laughs> That's what we're doing tonight. You're going to, re you're going to review the bylaws in item G. Yeah. And that would be the place if you wanted to make a change to the bylaws, you would want to consider adding a consent agenda to the bylaws at that point. And then well, but we can also in the bylaws we can also just waive those anytime we want to apparently. Well, you have to have a you have to have a public hearing. No, not the way I read them. But Rick, why this was the agenda item here was to discuss and vote on the consent agenda item. So why wouldn't we just vote on it now under this agenda item? Be uh, because of the way That's I read the bylaw, items. the bylaws, you're in the personnel policy, but in the bylaws, the changes to the bylaws require a public hearing. Well, uh, but I'm not sure what in the bylaws absolutely needs to be changed. Adding if it's a inconsistent. Consent. No, uh, what's what's inconsistent? In the bylaws. Bylaws specify how the agenda is set, set up. It says it includes, doesn't it? Or does it, is it exclusive? It, it, is it exclusive of everything? These bylaws or any provision thereof may be waived on any occasion by majority vote of the board unless otherwise provided by law. The order of business at regular shall, shall, shall be, be as may follows. May be amended. Yeah, we can amend, but we can, the bylaws or any provision thereof. Yeah, and a public hearing, though. No, that's if you're going to amend them as opposed to waiving oh. them. Oh, we mean we'd have to oh. waive them every meeting. Yeah. Which just seems a little well, disingenuous. Well, doesn't seem too difficult to do while we're incorporating it into the bylaw. <clears throat> I mean, I don't think it, I still don't think it's an insurmountable task. I think it's. I mean, I think, I think that well, we can have a vote on this particular agenda item now, and then when we get to the bylaws, we can, we can vote on whether we want to do the bylaws or not. Well, that's right, because not. depending on this vote, it yep. may be a non issue. Right. So. So I would move that the board um, approve the incorporation of a consent agenda place in. in future appropriate gen agendas going forward. Do I hear a second? I second that motion. Okay, was there anyone that would like to have any more <coughs> discussion at this point? If, if we're going to have it, I'd like to have it be a little more firm um, where the displaced person would then speak on their item. I think you could address that <coughs> in the amendment of the bylaws. I agree and it's just discussion. I'm going to vote no on the motion, um, not because I don't think that there is some merit to this, but I'm, I'm just concerned about the appearance of stifling any discussion at all. 
That's just how I feel about it. And, and I'm a talker, Ken, so I would be, I'm with you. Is there any further discussion? Okay, then I'll call a vote on this. All in favor? All opposed? And because it's a split vote, I'm going to ask the town clerk to poll the individual select board members. Or you can do it. You, you, oh, you, okay. You, usually I do it. Just records it. <laughs> Against. Uh, Mr. Hamilton? For. Right, Deborah? For. Yeah, Ken? Uh, against. And I'll vote for. So the vote is three to two. <clears throat> um, let's see. Uh, we also wanted to give some uh, further follow-up on our non-voting taxpayer meeting uh, that we held back September, I guess it was. And Deborah just had a clarification uh, that had come up during part of that discussion. So I'll ask her to just review that for us. Uh, yeah, thanks, Doug. Um, at the September 10th uh, meeting, um, the issue um, about non-residents being able to um, to vote came up and um, and the issue was of course just uh, just left un unanswered so I thought it was useful to take the opportunity um, to discuss what the what what the state of Maine um, requires uh, with respect to uh, to the law in that regard um, this is clear on the, it's not a legal opinion on my part, um, this is clear on the Secretary of State's website that um, only, uh, that only residents can vote, um, in specific, specifically it says on the Secretary of State's Bureau of Corporations, Elections and Commissions uh, website, it states that a resident cannot vote in two different jurisdictions. Uh, quote, you may live in two different homes during different parts of the year, but as a matter of law, you can have only one domicile and thus only one voting residence. Um, it goes on to state that registering to vote in Maine, an individual will, will, quote, be deemed to have declared residency in Maine, which may require compliance with other Maine laws, including the motor vehicle laws and tax laws. In other words, you'd be subject to Maine income tax. So. Um, this is a topic of great controversy across the country. It's, um, it's really been increasing, um, increasingly brought up to um, towns and states um, that as we have more and more residents who have two homes, uh, they naturally want to, um, to, have a, to have a say in those places where they're paying taxes. Um, it came up in, um, in one case in Colorado in which uh, there, um, because it was a um, home rule jurisdiction, um, they were able to um, to actually amend a charter. But that's not the case in Maine. Maine, Maine makes it very clear, um, even though we're a home rule jurisdiction, um, a home rule jurisdiction can only can only pass um, regulations or, or ordinances with respect to those things that this state has left available um, explicitly or implicitly for us to deal with. And here the state law is very clear with respect to residency. So there's nothing that this, um, this town can do with respect to the request of those um, non-voting taxpayers. Uh, the only thing that could happen is if they, um, if anybody wanted to lobby Augusta to change the law in Maine, that would be the remedy. Okay, thank you for that uh, background there, Deborah. <clears throat> okay, so again, uh, these next three items, the library bond has already been approved to be on the ballot, as has the polystyrene ban on the ballot. What's missing, though, is a recommendation from the select board as to how to vote on those questions. And Ken, I'm not quite sure how we vote that. I mean, is it a motion that gets made that the select board votes five to zero, four to one, three to two? I mean, typically in the past, when I was chair, and I think when Bill was chair before me, we just, we knew we were voting on a recommendation, and so the chair would ask how many recommend for the recommendation of this article, how many recommend against, and no motion was, motion. No motion was okay. needed. Um, and I believe, and Linda can probably help me there, if, if you think we should vote to place the articles again. I think we voted to place the articles last time. 
You did. We did. Yeah. Are we okay with that? I would say censure voting on it. Why can't you say just replace it on the, on the ballot and make your recommendation all and, in one motion? And because of the bond language, mm -hmm. this is the bond language, I specifically asked Shauna to make sure that we did not have any bumps in the road and that the language, the suggested motion is the language that she recommended. Okay. Um, just so we didn't have a bump in the road here on this, <clears throat> this one. We don't well have then, any. on advice of council, I guess, yeah. I move <laughs> to place the proposed bond language articles to construct a new library on the warrant for the November 6th ballot as presented. Is there a second? Second. And I believe that this motion then includes both, both of, of the articles, which is both the, the $1.5 million bond article and the bridge loan financing article, which we had the last time. Yes. So this, this motion covers both of those articles, and then following that, we would have a recommendation on, on them separately in case people want to recommend differently. All right. So is there any discussion? All right. So all in favor? The vote is 5 nothing. Now, <clears throat> um, at this point, I would ask individual board members uh, what their recommendation would be to vote yes on the two uh, we probably ought to do that okay, separately. Do it separately. You, you, have a, you have a very specific uh, language uh, in there uh, from Shauna, <clears throat> what, that, what that motion should be. All right. Well, I'll Just, wait for Well, um, you bit, Ken's okay, got I guess there. we might as well go with what she was. Like I say, in the past, we haven't had a formal motion for that, but if that's what Bond Council recommends, then okay. far be it for me. On the article regarding the library project $1.5 million bond issue, I move that the select board recommend yes to the voters for the November 6, 2018 ballot. There's a second. Second. Um, I guess no real discussion or just the vote. I'll call the vote on that. So uh, all in favor of the motion? The vote is 5 nothing. And on the article regarding the library project $300,000 potential short-term financing, I move that the select board recommend yes to the voters for the November 6, 2018 <coughs> ballot. I'll second. Second. Any discussion? And I'll call for a vote. All in favor of the motion? 5-0. And you want to do the recommendation for that? We just did. Oh, just did that. Yes, right. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, so um, that takes care of item C, but it also takes care of item D. No, no. No, you, that's a separate that's one. That's a separate. We have to move to sign the warrant. Right. Oh, yeah. Okay, which is this here. Okay. We haven't amended the warrant at all, have no, we? No, you have no, not. That's what we had before. Just in case you did. Then, okay. I, then I move to sign the November 6, 2018 town meeting warrant as presented. I second. All in favor? Okay, now this is in the red folder here. Yep. Everybody will need to sign that. Let's start it. Um, There's a bunch of copies of it. Finally, uh, a vote to place a recommendation on the polystyrene ban on takeout food containers. So this is just simply the recommendation. So um, let's yep. just have a vote of the uh, select board here. The the um, it's on the ballot, so is the select board in favor of that? All people in the select board in favor of the polystyrene, recommending yes on the polystyrene ban, raise your hand. Yep. All right, so that's unanimous. I'm sorry for the awkwardness. Um, Just making the sausage. Unfinished business. Okay, so now we go to new business. Uh, we have a thank you note here, Plants Unlimited. Well, let me give the background here that is everybody knows, I think, we had new sidewalks put in uh, in front of the post office. And during that reconstruction, uh, Mike sort of ended up with a, an area that he thought would be suitable for a small garden. So instead of putting grass or anything there, he put a garden in. And uh, the folks at Plants Unlimited uh, were kind enough to donate the fall plantings that you see there now, which I think look very nice. Um, and the plan moving forward will be to ask the Rockport Garden Club to suggest a more permanent uh, uh, garden for 
the springtime. So uh, it's just a, do we have a motion to, I guess we don't really need a motion, yeah. just a thank you card to Plants Unlimited for their donation. Yeah, and thank you very much to them. Yes. Uh, yeah, very nice. It's always nice when someplace dug up with dirt looks nice <laughs> <laughs> right after the fact. Yeah, and thanks to Mike for his suggestion. Um, Next on our agenda here is a request from the Library Foundation to hang a mural on the gable end um, and John Veeman uh, as part of that uh, uh, committee is here to make the proposal. Uh, the proposal uh, really is uh, part of uh, XTR Gold Publications. And uh, so we found we a, a picture in front of you. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, there is a picture in front of us here. Do we have it on the? No, oh. probably not. It's not okay. in the packet. So. Uh, yeah, it wasn't added it was, to the packet. It came in okay. after. Well, uh, I've got extra copies here if anybody needs it. <clears throat> so the idea is to um, uh, is to help educate the public about what they're going to be voting on on the ballot. Uh, this is a highly impactful way to make sure voters can see what they'll be voting on. And uh, as we worked on it, we found no better way to simulate what they're voting on than to create a mural in the exact location of where the new library is going to go. It'll help everyone envision exactly how the new library will look when it's completed. And um, it's a uh, vinyl covered material, cloth material. Uh, it'll It'll arrive already, already uh, trimmed to <coughs> the, uh, the shape of the contours of the roof line. Um, it will be attached with uh, using grommets, uh, so it's not a permanent sign. It's only going to be up for. Uh, uh, don't call it a sign. Okay. Uh, excuse me. Mural. Because that's sorry. My that's my contention. Sorry. Uh, it's a. It'll only be up for the mural. Will only be up there for a. Uh, limited period of time, so it's temporary. And, um, and again, our hope is really just once people can actually see this and envision it, it will help them uh, make an informed decision at the November election. Um, so what I would like is uh, the permission to go ahead and uh, erect the mural. Um, we uh, think we can have it here in 10 days once we have the approval of the select board. Um, and the, um, we probably will need the assistance of the town uh, public works department to help hang it. Um, and I think that's as much, I mean, we could do it uh, on our own, but there may be a liability issue for the town um, if we're getting up on the roof of the old building. And, it's falling down and in such disrepair, we could easily hurt ourselves. So. Okay. May we have a motion and then we'll discuss it? I move to allow the library building at 1 Lime Rock Street to be used to hang a mural that is being provided by the Rockport Library Foundation and installed by the Public Works Department. A second. 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 Okay, and we're open for discussion. I, I still think it's a mural, <clears throat> in a uh, sign rather. A mural, as I understand them, are things that are painted. I know Bill Nelpower has given his opinion with a little schmirkish grin, but uh, I understand the need for it. Um, uh, I, I love what the Rockport Library Foundation is doing, but I do have some concerns about this um, in terms of whether it's a sign or not. Um, we have a sign ordinance which has been rather contentious at times over the years. We have a code enforcement officer who is dogged about enforcing that sign ordinance. Um, and the town has to obey its own ordinances. Um, I'd be a little concerned that if a similar proposal came up, say for another entity in town, maybe even another nonprofit entity in town, like the hospital or something like that, to erect such a large uh, display that there might be some uh, some squabbling about that and we would be setting a precedent here by doing this so I that's a it's a tough one for me um, just because well, of that <clears throat> and I don't know, but it's too bad bill isn't here because uh, the temporary nature of it eliminates that issue uh, in my mind to some level plus there's no uh, well there are regulations about temporary signs too I think that we need to be 
as supportive of the library after all that we have gone through over the last few years as we can be. And I think that because there's an interpretation that allows it, that we should accept that. Is there a chance that the any cost associated from the highway, any hours or whatever, might be compensated back to the town by the foundation? That would be a question for John, I think. You know, I, it's going to be in, there'd be some cost, maybe fairly insignificant. I can't imagine it. Um, Deborah mentioned, is, is is there an interpretation that it, that it would be allowed? I guess I didn't. Yes. Hear that. Oh no, Bill. Bill and. Um, oh, he did. Bill and um, and um, Scott have both weighed in, and they both consider it a mural. Okay. And and, and not it, falling under the sun. In order. terms of setting a precedent, if I can add my comments on that, remember that this is an educational tool. This is showing, you know, making sure no one goes to that polling booth without being able to see what they're voting on. So that separates it from some of the other uh, nonprofit causes you might be worried about. I, I understand all that. I feel a little bit better if, if Bill and uh, Scott have weighed in and, and they think that it meets. I'm concerned with it meeting the ordinance because one of the last things in the world we want to do is is have an ordinance that the town then doesn't adhere to itself. And if they mm -hmm. feel that it's it's uh, okay with the ordinance, then I'm Okay with it. Any further discussion? <clears throat> okay, I'll take a vote. All in favor of the motion? All opposed? The votes unanimous. Thank, Thank you. you. John. <coughs> Thank you, John. Uh, okay, next on here is a revision to the Fee structure to the Opera Live Hopper House live stream contract through. Would you want to step up here and just review uh, for us what the Opera House committee discussion was like and what you're asking of us? Uh, my name is Andrew Weber. I'm the current manager of the Rockport Opera House. For those who don't already know me, um, just uh, requesting select board's approval of the uh, proposed amendment to add our live stream equipment to the rental contract and make it available for uh, public rental. Uh, the amendment would be for the equipment to be roughly $100 per day, generally uh, four hour blocks is how we rent the opera house. And it would only be allowed to be used uh, um, with one of our technicians managing and operating the equipment which would also be an additional $17 per hour for the video technician fee. After having reviewed the material provided, I would move to approve the proposed additions to the Opera House rental agreement as presented. I would second that. Okay. Any further discussion or questions of Drew? Uh, quick yes. question on the staff hour rates, the 17 and the 25. Does that cover all of the staff's compensation or just their wages? Um, uh, in other words, do you get paid twenty-five dollars an hour? Um, uh, the only time the manager would be involved in that is if the rental were to take place in the auditorium upstairs. Right, but I guess what I'm concerned—I want to make sure that all the costs are covered, because uh, it's quite honestly, this is a bargain. That was, good. That was my <laughs> next question. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I want to make sure that you know that that uh, we pay that you get what you have coming to you, but also that we are covering your workers' comp and all the other uh, right. the other costs that are involved with that. Yeah. Uh, so that would be, that's my only, I'm otherwise sure I think that that's a covering great all idea. Of that. Yeah. Because um, then if it isn't, then I would suggest amending this to bump those hourly rates to up cover, a little bit. You can, your, your, your motion can be to cover all of the um, employee costs. Oh, I think it's easier for, for somebody coming in to just have a set figure and we right. can just, I and mean, if we make a little yeah. extra money on it, that's like I say, this, for somebody coming in, the, the functionality of this stuff is worth oh, a lot more. Than I'll withdraw my motion. Stuff. No, I think we can leave it in. We can amend it. I would it. like to amend the motion. Or, no, now that the motion is withdrawn, I will make a new motion. I motion that we approve the proposed additions to the Opera House rental agreement as presented uh, to reflect and also consider the full up cost of the manager and technicians uh, rates. I'll second that. Okay, is there a discussion to the, of the amendment? All in favor of the amendment? Actually, I think it's a new motion because it's a new motion. Mark motion. withdrew his motion. Oh, withdrew it. I mean, okay. the new motion. <laughs> okay. So is there a second? 
Yeah, we had the second. Okay. okay. All right. Any discussion of that? Um, I'm just assuming that once those new numbers are generated, they'll come back to us at some point. So, yes, yes. Rick, we need to make that happen, right? Yes. Just amend this right. document so we have it on record. Right. And that would be something that you, if it came back to you, that could go on to the consent, the consent agenda. agenda. <laughs> exactly. Oh, okay. Exactly. All right. Uh, all in favor of the motion. Once again, unanimous. Thank you, Drew. Thank you very much. Thank you. I think this will be a uh, great addition to the Opera House. Yes. Thank you for the work you do there. Okay, um, review of Harbor Park, oh, I'm sorry. Um, I yeah, <laughs> presentation from the Midco Solid Waste. Uh, Owen, you have a 10 minute presentation for us? Awesome. <clears throat> well, thank you all very much. Uh, good seeing you. Thank you all uh, for the opportunity to just talk about the Solid Waste Corporation. Jim Garrett <coughs> is going to be here, but tonight is his wife's 61st. <laughs> 28th Bur yeah. birthday, birthday. <laughs> and so they're having dinner everybody and listening out there. <laughs> yeah. first month 61st month of the 28th yeah we just record. burned a minute of that 10 so um, <laughs> I know it's the limit questions um, so what I was hoping to accomplish out of this was twofold one just kind of sketch out the corporation what the corporation's responsibilities are the relationship with the towns, where the corporation's responsibilities stop and the town's responsibilities pick up so that you all have a better understanding of how it functions, and then just kind of sketch out some of the items we anticipate coming down the pike in the next year or so, so that when we come back after the board has made certain decisions and we're now handing it down to the individual select boards, as we come back to talk about these items, we hope not to talk about the general structure of the corporation and really talk about the item that, that we're going to be asking you all to put on the ballot at some point in the future. So uh, what are the town's responsibilities? So when the corporation, uh, they kind of, there are two main blocks of decision making. So internal policy type things, day-to-day -day operational things. I mean, we, we have a, uh, a manager, we have an executive committee. Between the two of them, they can manage day-to-day -day operations. If they're talking about shifting from a historical day-to-day -day operation to a new day-to-day -day operation, like we would come to the board, all internal stuff. It's when uh, you're talking about a contract over the length of three years or any borrowing over $950,000 or any change to the interlocal agreement, uh, all of those items take town approval from all four member municipalities, no matter how big or how small that they are. Um, the, like I said, the, the Solid Waste Corporation's job is to do some of the policy things, things on site. Um, our manager is constantly chasing uh, markets for some of our commodities. We sing, still do um, source separation, so we have a baler on site. We bale and store these items and then look for a favorable time in the market to shift out a couple container loads of box board or mixed plastic, three through sevens. Um, the dynamic of solid waste has shifted dramatically in the last year and a half to two years to where we used to be getting more money for these commodities. Um, because of the shift in the China market, um, it's now a lot of conversations about how little money can we spend to properly um, move these resources on to other. So we still recycle, we still reduce, reuse, and do as much as we can, but the markets have definitely shifted on us. Um, one of the ways that I've been trying to, to get it across to the different towns is the corporation was at an easy way of kind of going on autopilot for a while because the markets were favorable. So if the board made a poor decision because they were just on autopilot, maybe they were getting $50 a ton for a resource versus $70 a ton for a resource. They were still making money off of it, but maybe eh, it was just easier this way. Now the decisions we have is all coming up with money, not necessarily revenue coming in, though our ones and twos are still doing pretty good. Um, Items that we anticipate coming down the pike, 
Uh, we'll take the inner local as a, a brief example. Um, for me anyway, there are two different uh, bins of things that we need to do with the inner local. The inner local was last amended in 2002. And so there are some <coughs> things that I would refer to as housekeeping, with an example being the executive committee uh, talks about having town manager of Rockport, town manager of Camden, uh, administrator of Lincolnville, and a select board member of Hope. And it's because back in 2002, Hope didn't have a town administrator. So that select person was filling that role. That's a bit of a housekeeping thing. Uh, other things that are in the inner local, like the weighted vote that you all had discussed previously, um, those are more substantive, major substantive changes. So what I'll be proposing to the board is a kind of a two track on the inner local. The things that are legit housekeeping, that's kind of not arguable. They're all things everyone agrees on. It's just bringing the document up to date. And then separately, some of the more controversial things, primarily because I just don't want to see the housekeeping fail because we attached some more controversial riders onto it. Um, the bylaws were last amended in 2015, internal corporation bylaws. We had a conversation about potentially merging the two documents. We can't do that because we are a corporation. We have to have our own individual bylaws. But the two documents just aren't <coughs> in sync so much. Um, another item that will be coming down the pike in the not too distant future is the facilities redevelopment with uh, some potential associated bond with it. Um, we want to, and there's a strong desire of the board to continue moving forward with the facilities redevelopment. Um, for me, just speaking for myself, but I think a lot of members of the board agree. There are three primary objectives that we'd want to accomplish with the facilities redevelopment. One is traffic flow and safety. Um, if you've been to the facility, you realize, um, if you think about it for a while, that facility was never designed. It just happened. It's kind of exciting. It was, it was a place that everyone was throwing their trash, and so it made a, a logical place to make it formal. And then we acquired some more land and expanded, acquired land, expanded, expanded this. So it was never designed to be a, a comprehensive facility. It's not like we sat down and said the easiest way to do it would be like this. It was just piecemeal over time. So traffic flow and safety is something that suffered because of that. The other thing is the board has voted to switch to single stream with the uh, Every person that we had talked to when we were doing facilities redevelopment, um, uh, sounding board with different engineering firms, talking with EcoMain, talking with as many folks as we can, single stream is the way of the future. It's a way of trying to reduce things out of the waste stream and getting <coughs> into the recycling stream. Um, a lot of things made sense, again, up until about a year and a half ago with these rapid shifts in the market. The tip rate for uh, single stream recycling is almost comparable now with solid waste, um, which is atypical. Typically, you would get some money back for your single stream. Um, so that's the only hiccup with going to single stream is that the markets have shifted pretty, pretty quickly on us. Um, but that is something that the board has voted on. So trying to have our large blue building is kind of the primary focus of um, major building renovations or potentially new building construction. We haven't gotten that far into it, but having something that's flexible enough to accommodate single stream now, but again, flexibility to see where the markets are in 15 years and have a building that could be reoriented to meet with whatever it is that we're trying to do um, at that point in time, 10 to 15 years from now. And the third major thing is now that we're hauling down to Eco Main versus Perk, Perk was closer, Eco Main is further away. So our trucking fees have gone up because of the greater distance. We're still doing old school trucking with roll off containers. We want to have some top feed, um, larger uh, tractor trailers um, that requires a more significant grade change and just some <coughs> other logistical landscaping type issues. Um, but those are our, in my opinion, our three big priorities, traffic flow and safety, single stream, and hauling more um, weight per load to start bringing down the costs of trucking a little bit. 
Um, the last uh, kind of big item, uh, and then happy to take any questions, is corporate governance, if you will. Uh, there's a lot going on with that statement, but we realize that there's not confusion over who does what, but there's just not a huge amount of clarity about roles and responsibilities sometimes, and really spelling out in detail what is expected of folks. So our inner local talks about the executive committee doing day-to-day uh, -day operations if empowered by the board, yet we have a dedicated manager for that facility that does day-to-day -day operational things. So when we did the inner local, that position never existed. We don't really have a robust job description. We don't have expectations, goals, ensuring that we're doing performance evaluations and meeting those goals. <laughs> so, um, that rail didn't work on the balcony. <laughs> that, was, uh, that was a good thump. Uh, we hope everyone is okay. Um, so, and the same thing with the executive committee. If we have this dedicated manager of the facility, what is now the role of the executive committee? And as I've really tried to get my arms around it, the best way I can try to describe it is when we have an idea, a thought bubble, right, of a policy change or a whatever that we want to do at the facility, we haven't necessarily designed a good um, funneling system for putting those concepts into the appropriate places. So if it's a thing with the union contract, right, we don't have a methodology that says when we do our union contract, the first stop off is the executive committee. And they look at it with their big executive brains and then they hand it off to the personnel committee because they're charged with personnel things. It's a union contract. After they've negotiated and gotten some things and put a stamp and a recommendation, it goes to the board. We don't have a system designed like that. And so every time an idea or a thought bubble comes in, it goes in this weird abstract way and we're just not super efficient. So um, what I guess I'll leave the presentation with is <coughs> it appears as though as much as we all want to get onto facilities redevelopment, that we're going to be spending quite a, not a huge amount of time, but we need to spend some necessary time uh, sorting out internal <coughs> things, sketching out <coughs> job descriptions better, expectations, how information and paperwork flows in and amongst the corporation, responsibilities of individual towns, responsibilities of the executive committee, because the facilities redevelopment is going to be a, a relatively large undertaking and we need to be very thoughtful about it because we've been taxing both all four towns have been hitting their citizenry relatively hard with the new middle school Camden and Rockport are getting hit pretty exceptionally hard as well so we want to take some time and be thoughtful about it but it's my opinion that the corporation and the governance and the board is not at a, not that we're at an unhealthy place, but we are not a, at a healthy enough place to where I think we could have that discussion in a meaningful, positive way that starts really netting some good results and some things we can hand down to the towns. Um, so that's kind of my, my bit of a presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions. I um, want to make a couple of comments because uh, I'm on the committee with uh, Owen is one of the Rockport representatives and I want to thank Owen very much for the work that he's doing now as our new chairman in leading this work that so badly needs to be done it's very much appreciated uh, I have no compunction about telling you my shortcomings it's a topic I, uh, I know nothing about really I may get to the meetings but um, uh, um, really Owen is doing a great job with the leadership and I'm thinking as a Rockport citizen it would probably be helpful as we sort of get to these uh, decision points where the select board has to weigh in uh, I hope the board would be comfortable with my inviting Owen to come as a Rockport citizen and, and sort of give us his his viewpoint and perhaps recommendation because I think it would be much more helpful than mine um, so again our thanks to you well, thanks, Owen. it was very helpful yeah, and so like I had said in the, in the beginning, we do anticipate some things coming down to the individual boards in the next year or so. And I would also then anticipate that anything that gets handed down, say for a June vote, if we get the inner local figured out by then, um, Jim and I or any other folks 
would again do a tour of the four town select boards, talk about that topic specifically and in detail, and then go about trying to inform the community about the decision they'll be asked to well, make. But we're special because you live in Rockport. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to chime in too. I think that your presentation tonight was terrific, especially for the newer members who yeah. Yeah. don't know a lot yeah. about this. I listen to you. Uh, it's complicated. And I listen to you, Owen, and I am thankful. Absolutely. And uh, we're on that committee. Owen and I have had a few discussions about it, and, and I know that Owen is very passionate about this, and I think it's fortuitous that he has become chairman of this board. And, and uh, again, like Doug, I thank you very much for taking that on and, and doing the work. I think you're doing a terrific job. Thank you. That's great. Um, and then the last, last thing, because I'm great at saying you're last Owen. thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> um, uh, you're Owen. I apologize that um, I think that there was kind of a void of information in your packet um, because of just this being the last meeting or, or whatever it was, we somehow slipped up and didn't get you all um, the information. But I'll work with Rick and ensure that you get some Rick. documents that we put together recently sketching out some of these issues, but also the interlocal and the bylaws um, with those being things, especially the interlocal. And I would encourage everyone to look through it. And if you have something that you think we should be talking about, about it, that we haven't caught, um, I'm sure there's some good topics of discussion that you all may come up with if you review those documents. Great. Great. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next is to review the Harbor Park usage background on this. You'll remember that a month or so ago, Paul Charbonneau came to uh, voice his concerns about what the events uh, at the uh, Marine Park were sort of doing to the ambience of his neighborhood. Um, and so uh, we went ahead and got some data, and data is always a good thing to, to have when you're having a discussion like this. So in your packet, uh, Brandy, who's the administrative assistant at uh, Public Works, has summed up here for us the nine events uh, that have happened or will be happening uh, over the course of the summer. You'll see that two of those were sort of uh, public events, one was the Andre the Seal unveiling, and the other was our um, concert that was down there by the uh, uh, Bay Chamber folks. Uh, the other events, the other seven events, were all just private events, and uh, her data here shows us basically uh, what it cost each uh, uh, group, and uh, the running total there for the seven events was then $6,320. So I'm going to open up the discussion. Having looked this all over, I'll give you my personal opinion, and then, of course, we can all talk about it. Um, I personally think we sort of have two options down there. Um, one, I think we can discontinue private events in the park, just say we're not going to do it, private events. Or two, I think we should increase the fees that we're charging these people for the use of our beautiful marine park uh, such that we're getting enough revenue from doing that that it will outbalance the seasonal discomfort that our citizens in the neighborhood may have for those those events okay. my personal opinion doug if i could just ask yeah. the objective of this discussion is to do exactly what make recommendations as to the fee schedule which I think we set. Back yeah. in the day, the only one left is Linder on the Parks Committee. There was a Parks Committee. We all got together with the Sue Dates, Linda, myself, Tom Ford at the time, if that tells you how long ago it was. And we came up with a fee structure, and I don't think that they've been utilized. Obviously, none of them are there now except for Linder, but it was laid upon them to come up with a structure for fees to be set. <clears throat> I don't know where these came from. They must have. Uh, are we using? We must be using the fees that were. That were Gotta be a fee schedule. That in the harbor. Yeah, it is. Isn't that in the harbor fee structure? I, not, I'm not, not sure. Think so where because it's, yeah, it's, I'm not it's sure more a park lives. issue than a harbor okay. issue because yeah. it's on land. Guess, that's the way. I, and that. now that's Maybe. another. We'll go yeah. ahead. Well, on the overall issue, I'll just weigh in. I, I'm looking at these events, and they're spread between you know, June into October. Every one of them. Uh, and relatively early in the day, except for a couple which are the full-on wedding receptions, all of which are scheduled 
for completion and to be wrapped up and done by 10 o'clock, which by our ordinance, uh, our noise ordinance, 10 o'clock says you're done. Yeah. And that's whether it's in, on my front lawn or at the Harbor Park or, any, or in the middle of the street. In addition, we have police and we have the ability to manage exceptions uh, for noise or other disruption and activities. As a result, I would not recommend a change to, or I would not be an advocate of a change to the use of the Harbor Park for the current uses as they stand. I would, however, be uh, personally receptive to increasing the fee because I don't think the fees, after we've learned about how much we're charging for this activity, really covers uh, what it should. I might say, Mike, uh, we also have a letter in our packet from Sam Temple, who is chair of the Harbor Committee, and um, they weighed in and they just said basically that uh, the event strike is as appropriate. Um, if there have been any issues with the events, our feeling any necessarily policy amendments could be implemented. Police have been hired to attend the events. So, you know, they basically said they don't have an issue per se with the events. Mike? Uh, the last time I remember, I think I just started, so it's been close to seven years. That was the last time that I think fees, it's been quite a while since the fees have been looked at. So well, I think long that time. I would suggest, you yeah. know, as being a part of Brandy overseas that I, I think they should be looked at. It's been a long time. I don't, I don't think we've ever disbanded the committee that uh, was in charge of setting them in the first place, even though there's only one around. And I uh, would add that <clears throat> in the ordinance review committee within the past couple of years, we worked pretty hard on the noise ordinance and it was actually in response to uh, Bettina's event mm -hmm. down there, which I don't remember what it was called, but it was a big deal event, took up the whole park and they liked to go till 11 or midnight and they had some really, really loud music. and so. Out of that came the ordinance limitation that Jeff noted, which is that you have to stop at 10 o'clock. Uh, you know, music can't be heard beyond the property lines after 10 o'clock, and that's, that's correct for and, all properties. And that involved, even with the opera, I would say, talked about the windows being open, and can you hear it? Right. So, I mean, we talked about it pretty well in depth at the time. So that was, and that's fairly recent, and we had a pretty robust debate about it. The people voted on it and voted to approve it. Um, I know a couple of years ago we had talked about it, and I don't know whether it ever came to pass or not. I, when I was on the board at the time, there was a sense of the board that we didn't want to rent out the whole park. Right, we put a moratorium in uh, size. size. And so and I think that's one thing that we could look at would be limiting the size of the tents, because the park belongs to the people of Rockport. And the, t the citizens... Well, we, do, we do have... We do have a size interrupt. now. We do right. have a very strict you know, size right. and coverage. Is it 40 by 80 yeah. now, or is it I think it's 60 40 by, by 80 with a 20 by 20 okay. food yeah. tent. So that's, that's, that's the, I just want to make sure that that's in there because, and that. And that kept maybe, that tent away from like staking into the power lines yeah. and it left well, some Well, because space people need open. to be able to go down there and sit by the water, even if there's another event there. And, and the expectation of those who rent the park can't be that it's exclusively theirs because it isn't. It belongs right. to the people and the people should be able to go down How, and use it. Since we, uh, since we enacted that moratorium in, on the size and go, has gone to smaller tents, uh, the, the number of complaints we have about the tent. And we also limited the time that the tent could be up. It can mm -hmm. only be up the day before and the day of the event and then the day after, and we charge for each of those days um, before, no, it, before they right. just charged once. If, if I recall, the original issue associated with this was noise and disturbance. Mm -hmm. That was the complaint. and 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 non-use of the park because like I say you know when, when the other right. event was going they put up this giant tent take up the whole park it was put up yeah. four days before and, up, and so people lost the use of citizens lost the use of their park for a week in the middle of the summer which was didn't go over well but that I issue yeah but that issue has been addressed now and I think so yeah. and um and and you know it's not like these are happening on a daily basis I mean when you look at the dates okay there there was on 713 and 714 um back to back <laughs> uh events but for the most part, just looking at this, it looks like it's every two or three weeks. There's one weekend, one weekend night, it appears. I'm assuming these are weekends. 
um, that an event is uh, taking place. Um, and as Jeff noted, you know, they're done by 10, and some of them are earlier in the day type of events. Um, I don't think that's an unreasonable thing, and I also would not be in favor of banning events. Well, let me uh, let. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, um, odd question. After everyone, it says applicant older residency of yeah, old. I think it's that that holder. I'm well, so guessing there's an H missing. I there. Yeah. Oh. So we only rent to old, old people. people. <laughs> yeah, I, I couldn't understand that <laughs> yeah, either. That's so, a typo. so the other part about that is I, you know, and sort of for us to be able to get on and going with this, um, oh, yeah. I mean, we already know Linda was part of the old group. Randy's doing it now. Perhaps get another person, make it a three or four person group and just have Rick instruct that group to get back to us with an update in, in October for fees. And Rick was the, on the size issue, we enacted a moratorium right. that by definition is temporary. Do right. we need so, to formalize the policy of what those when you're should be? When you're revising yeah. this policy, we should revise the right. whole thing. Yeah, so, so that would be part of it is we would right. want to make that moratorium. If it's working, let's make it permanent. Yeah. Right now, Mike, uh, it's, it's seeming like for our non-resident to rent the, um, to put a tent up, uh, to rent the park for three days is $650, and that's 550 bucks a day, which seems low. Yeah, I would to, agree. Yeah, I mean, if you did this at the SAM set or anything like that. Right. Oh, it's, yeah. Well, I can tell you, if you did it at, at Camden Yacht Club, I just, I yeah. did, I did um, review a couple of these things. If you did it at Camden Yacht Club, it would cost, and, and again, they do have the, the clubhouse there, but it's mm -hmm. a small clubhouse. It's not, you know, something, um, you know, massive. It's not palatial. No. <laughs> and um, that is, uh, for a non-resident, that's $3,500. And it's um, plus uh, staff duty and cleaning. Hmm. And for members, and that's really just for, for the members, it's not for the nieces oh. or nephews. I had occasion to look into that recently. Um, just for the members' uh, rental, it's 2500 Okay. Linda, do you, do you still have a copy of the And that's just a one-day policy? Thank you. Yeah. It's one day. Can we get the old copy that they used and maybe modify what's already in place? Yeah, well, Linda, you want to track that down? Sure. Which part are we doing? Modifying the, well, here's the what, whole here's, thing or just let me, the let fee me, schedule? Well, let me sum this up. Okay. First of all, and again, on a personal note, um, you know, public events, the Bay Chamber ha wants to have a concert for the, for the town that's free, and as long as they follow the other ordinances, I think that's great. Uh, it seems to be the sense of the board that we'd like to continue to provide this as a service to both residents and non-residents, but the fee needs to be increased. So we're gonna ask uh, Linda and Rick to revisit this issue and, and come back to the select board with a new recommended fee schedule because it's our responsibility <clears throat> to review and amend that fee schedule as recommended to us. And so for right now, that's my sense of what the board wants to do. And I, I would add to that to formalize the size limitations that right, right now exist as a temporary moratorium. Do you want Brandy on that committee too? Because I would I yeah, say, say yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. it's oh, yeah. Okay. My, my no, recollection, there was pieces in there that, that made preference to nonprofits. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, for less. That was going to be my question right. is if it, a nonprofit is having a public event, yeah. As a fundraiser, for say, say for example, Pause was doing a public event to raise money for Pause, um, and members of the public could come to that. That's different than somebody who's having a wedding. That's a closed event. And, wedding. And where would that fall into the policy now? What, what would we charge? That would be under the. Well, I think there's a part in in the yep. existing unchanged since back when mm -hmm. policy that addresses that. I don't. Remember yep. specific, but there is something in place. We can we can look th look into that and bring that up. <clears throat> it may be worth looking at the opera house policy too to see if you can have some parallels there, so that there's some consistency across mm -hmm. the policies that might make some me? sense yep. if it's right. if it's and working. Yeah. Okay. I, well, yes, and I agree. I think that's all worthy yeah, goals. Yeah, I'm sure. sort of hoping not to kill the, <laughs> the fee increase right. with bureaucracy. So. Well, I, I guess think. my <clears throat> my thought on that would be given the time of year we're at. 
Yeah. You know, it's not going to go into effect until yeah, next year next anyway. So I would say let's take the time and, and take a good hard look at it so that we can, we only have to do it once. Okay. So sense of the board that yep. we'll bring that back. Yes. Yeah. No motions required. No. So, okay. All right. I've lost my agenda again. Winter sanding. Oh, yeah. Um, Again, this is sort of my <clears throat> curiosity. Um, you know, every year, when you look at our budget, we sp the town spends a lot of money on putting sand down on the roads. And then in the spring, we spend a lot of money on picking the sand up and not always doing a great job. The crews go out to plow, um, and that costs us a fair amount of money in overtime and comp time. And my question sort of, and we have Mike here to answer it, is it all necessary to the degree that we do it? We live in Maine where we have snowstorms. And if we didn't send the trucks out and, well, first of all, what is the policy? Because I don't think there is a policy. There is a policy. Okay. There well, is. when there's not a policy, we write a policy. But, you know, should we say, well, when there's two inches of road, yeah, snow, the plows go out. When there's three inches, they go out. When there's four, let's, I'd like to talk about it because there's a lot of money and small changes one way or the other could right. make a big difference. And right. what do we as a town want to handle this? How do we want to handle it? I've reached out, I've put it out on a list, uh, email to talk to other public works directors. I've contacted all the surrounding public works directors and nobody has any policies on sanding and when when you first when I first heard this I was kind of like how would you do it and that's kind of the feedback I've gotten from all the other public works directors every storm is different all the temperatures are different we don't want to put down any more snow or any more sand than we have to and it changes you know, each storm to what the storm is. So all, all the directors I've talked to, nobody has a policy for sanding. Mm -hmm. They have policies for plowing of, you know, an inch of snow. Then you put your blade down, you start scraping. And in a, during a snowstorm, we don't usually sand during, throughout a storm, with the exception of intersections and hills. It's just the slippery, sharp corners. That's the only place we put sand down during a storm. Well, um, what, what's the plowing policy then? When we, we don't we don't have any policy. Okay, it, it's according to again the snow, how slick, how. Well, uh, okay. so I can up chime up. in a little bit and say that <coughs> two inches of snow at 15 degrees is a lot different than two inches of snow <laughs> at 34 degrees, um, as far as you know whether you plow it, whether you sand it, and things like that. Um, I think that in general, and then Steve, if you were here, Steve Beveridge would give you a little bit of history that when he right. was hired, he was told at the time Rockport had a reputation of having terrible roads and terrible road conditions in the winter. And his edict, as he used to tell us, was that he was hired to make the roads better in Rockport. And so I think that, you know, the board as a general guideline wants our roads to be safe. Um, time of day has a lot to do with it. If it starts to snow like mad at 1, 2 o'clock in the morning, I'm sure you're probably a little less aggressive with it than you would be at right. 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Definitely. So my opinion is we need to leave it to the professionals to make those decisions. I, we hire these professionals to take care of this, and, and so I think we need, and, I, and I'll say right now, I think you guys do a terrific job. Yeah, I agree uh, with that. Mr. Chair, if I might, I mean, I think you and I have touched <clears throat> on this. I. Uh, on average, Mike, um, on your plow route now, any plow route, what does it take to, how much time does it take to do your route? Oh, 45 minutes, yeah, hour, it's the hour same and thing. It's same thing as according to the storm, uh, how slippery, but they're gonna I mean, be it, out, they're gonna be out for two hours, hour and a half. If it's really snowing, it, it may be more, but anywhere from a little over an hour to an hour and a half. So, and, and where I'm going with that is with, with tough decisions to be made coming up. If you were to realign the current plow routes to compensate for one fewer plow persons, how much of an increase might that be? In other words, you, so you'd go from an hour to an hour and a half before they'd make the loop or two hours. Is that, is that unreasonable? I guess it, it's, it's going to be according to, you know, storm. according to the storm. It's, yeah. it's, 
I mean, just it's right, an average. Right, right? right now, we're, we're able to keep up. It's a good, <laughs> the, the distances, the amount of length they have with the size truck they have, yeah. it, it works well. The road isn't unsafe. There's times when it gets blizzarding, snowing harder, that, yeah, the roads are still unsafe, and we come back, reload, there's a line well, at the shop, and back around again, I'll we go. probably catch hell from this from the audience, but, I mean, I we do have an opening coming up, and... And I think with budgetary concerns, I think that's something we need to consider taking a look at. Well, you'll feel the impact of that. It, yeah, yeah it, it, pl it, plowing is just a yeah, you know, small, I under, small portion. I understand portion. that, but yeah. as they told me in 08, when they kept me one position, mm -hmm. find a way to make it work. You know, So it's just something to consider as we go forward, what the implications will be. Yeah. Well, here's, okay, so here's the, another question for you, Mike. I'm sort of picturing <clears throat> um, a situation where suppose there is a, a snow event predicted that's coming that's going to have two inches of snow, okay? Mm -hmm. And I know I've heard some towns, not around here, but maybe New Hampshire or whatnot, you know, have sort of this black road policy. And that means that as soon as there's a half an inch of snow, right. they get out there and they right. plow no matter how much is expected, right. and so it's a black road. Yep. So my question is to you, is there any room for a situation where Ken here says, well, we're gonna get an inch and a half of snow this <coughs> afternoon. You know, we really don't need to plow. You know, it, people will manage. Is there a level you can two inches? You know, do you plow when there's a half an inch? I, we, and we, we, usually, we usually don't come out until the PD calls and says, all right, we're getting wrecks. It's time to come out. Mm -hmm. That That's our... At night, for our nighttime yeah, plow. Yeah, right. A late. I mean, we're, we're in during the day, but any time off hours, mm -hmm. that's our key that, you know, people should know how to drive, but they don't practice safe driving, and it seems to be up to us to make the road safe enough to for them to get around. A reminder again, this agenda item came from me. Okay. I would offer that, uh, you know, the responsibility of the town is to provide emergency services, provide proper public works, including town road maintenance, plowing, sanding, and then obviously the school part. The public works group has a budget. We established that budget. We approved the budget. Uh, every snowstorm is different, and I am fearful that if we tried to develop a policy that might or would otherwise be micromanagement to some level of the activities of public works that we would be in trouble because, as I said, every storm is different, and we owe the people of the town of Rockport safe roads to ride on in the wintertime, and we need to – there are public works guys – spent a whole lot more hours plowing around in a snowstorm and, and sanding and salting. I, I gotta believe Mike and his team are using the proper judgment. I, I agree with your concern on if we had a black road policy, it would cost a fortune, mm -hmm. you know, and, and we don't have a black road. The, the pavement must be black. That's an expensive way to go. Uh, but. Uh, you know, the first time we start getting stingy on salt and plowing, and we start with traffic accidents that are severe, uh, it's not good. I echo those comments. Uh, I agree. Um, okay. How many plow routes do you have, Mike, right now? Nine. Nine, okay. Mike, to, to be, you know, an explanation of what happens, you know, it's easy in the blizzards, you know, when it's snowing, you know, two inches an hour, three inches an hour, those, those calls are easy to make. You know, we're out plowing, they're, they're working. It's the, the storms that, and Mike and I will have like three or four conversations sometimes in an afternoon, and I'll reach out to Ken, you know, to get, to get an idea of what to expect during the overnight hours. Um, and Mike's attitude usually is, if I can get away with sending the guys home or getting some sleep, getting them some sleep overnight, and knowing that I've got to get them back out in the morning so that for the commute and for school buses, that's what he'll focus on. But 
often, you know, his best laid plans are to go that way, and then we'll get the call from the police department that the roads are getting extremely slick and people are going off the road and the fire department is out at all kinds of calls, and they end up having to go back out. But I, I do know, and I can, you know, say that Mike is very, is very concerned about making sure that we don't overdo things. It's not just we're going to plow until every flake of snow is stopped. Um, and we, we often re will wrestle with those, que those questionable storms. It, the blizzard is easy. You know, that, that one's easy. It's the, it's the ones that are just on the edge of, you know. Yeah, two inches. Yeah, it's the, it's the smaller storms that are the tougher right. ones. Right, and you, and you can see by the end of, you know, getting closer to spring, people are just learning that, you know, the snow on the ground, we need to slow down. But up, up until the very end, they just <clears> don't <throat> get it. Yeah. Okay, well, I think we've heard the sense of the word. And again, no and, and that's, you know, I'm, I'm going to keep doing what I can to yeah. use as little as we can because that's what we're supposed to do. Cut down in front of my house. Thank you. Good dump extra. All right. Um, so we're sort of doing a town wide effort at this point to review everyone's uh, bylaws. And so, of course, I have bylaws. Uh, are in the packet here for us to review and comment on and and make suggestions. They were last uh, revised um, in 2016. But but they weren't, were they? I mean, they, well, they were approved though by us on June. Yeah, they're approved every year. Oh yeah. well, yes, that's yeah. a good point. They're, yeah. they're approved every year. They yeah, do. right. As but a, they're approved at part of our organizational meeting. Right. Aren't well, they? before you yes, really it, have. Yeah, before nobody Nobody's really looked knows. at them, and yeah. it's 24 right. hours right. or less after right. you've been elected. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Made it tough. I don't know what you're well, I know. I mean, <laughs> the first year I was elected, I approved them at the organizational meeting, and then I had a suggestion a couple of months later for a revision, and yeah. the board revised them at that time. And yeah. again, the purpose is to have all committees to have their things in uh, so that we can have them all and approve them for October, our October meeting. And then every three years thereafter, review them. Uh, except for us, we do it yearly. So. Our bylaws are a little different because all the other committees, we approve them. Any changes we make to ours, um, we're going to have to have a majority vote after we've had a public hearing, notice in a public hearing on our changes. So yeah. that makes it a little bit more complex. But So is it your intention then to go through and talk about the changes that we would like to see now? Well, I think so. Okay. I think we could do it efficiently. You know, just by going by yep. section, section, whether by there's section. exceptions or no exceptions. And, okay. and um, with the idea being Linda will take notes and then we'll set up a special hearing in town or a hearing. Next, next meeting. Unless we have no changes. <laughs> well, I we'll uh, think we're going to have changes. So. Well, we've got a meeting coming up next to, uh, no, it's tomorrow. We can't do it that quickly. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. So the next meeting in October would be the perfect time to yeah. do it. Yeah. Okay. So, right. so we'll how do we out. agree on the changes as a select board in this upcoming process here? Well, we have to have a majority vote on the changes. Now, I guess we could either do that um, collectively, you know, when the, doc the new document is prepared, or we could just do them individually and vote them up or down. Well, I think that for this evening, we ought to go through and see what people have to say and, and then have it have it come back to us as a document to review. I think right. you're asking right. too much what to vote it? on them tonight, yeah. in my opinion. Okay. What does this feel about that? Well, I'm, I'm just wondering if I have a change in Section 2, you, Linda's going to take notes on it. Mm -hmm. But it might not be a change that everybody is in favor of. Well, well we can talk about it and get yeah. the census. Get a yeah. All right. census so let's get so a drop. We're not let's that. do yeah. the all yeah. right. So let's do that. the yes no. Years. Okay. So all maybe right. if you just went by section section one. No exceptions. No. No. Okay. Section two. I have one in the first sentence, um, and this is just housekeeping. I I would. I think that it's just worded strangely, and I would say officers of the board shall consist of a chairman and vice chairman to be chosen annually at an organizational meeting of the board. I would add of the board to be held within 24 hours of the town election in June, oh, yeah, period. Yeah. 
I like that change. And then I would take out the and from among board members. That's obvious. Yes. But it's a meeting of the board mm -hmm. okay. and period after June. Agree. And take take out what it, what, what did you say? Take out uh, take out and, and from, from among board, board members at the put end. A period after June. Oh, okay. Period after June. Insert of the board after the word meeting in the second line. Okay. Yep. Everyone can agree to that change. Yep. Okay. Okay with me. Second sentence. Uh, the chairman shall. I think in order to be consistent with the charter of the town. Uh, the chairman shall preside at all board meetings, shall have authority to rule, et cetera, to determine the course of the proceedings, put a period, and cross off the rest of the sentence because the ambiguity there is I had not the, understandable. I had the same, um, uh, the same change because I do think that would make it consistent with the town charter, which I don't believe it is now. Should that be uh, in? Did you get that, Linda? It's a period after the word oh, we proceedings. Can always go, we can always go to the live stream. Yeah, the live we stream. We can go to the live stream. In, you know, keeping up with things, should it be chairperson or chairman or chairwoman? Um, chair? We need to decide one way or another. You know, to, as much as I appreciate that kind of thing, I think that our town charter and everything is probably so buried in things of chairman and vice chairman that. You could just say chair. Chair. Say chair. 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 That would be yep. fine. I think that's Is fine. Like chair and vice chair? I like that. Yeah, I think that's All fine. the way through. Yeah. Yep. 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 Everywhere it appears. Okay. That's an easy find, replace. Okay. Yeah. I, I have, have a, something in the next sentence. So do, do I. You? Okay. <laughs> you go. All right. The chairman also shall, together with the town manager, and I would uh, set the agenda for each meeting, inclusive of any input from other select board members. If I have an agenda item that I'd like to present, I'd like to be able to present it to the town manager and the select board for inclusion. Yep. And it doesn't say that. You know, that's the way we've been working for years. Right. So yeah. it's, it's, but that's, it is that's, good that's, to spell it's good to spell it out. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's, it's, it's not a change when in how I first operations. started. You know, how do you know if I want something on the agenda? How yeah. do I do it? So, right. Yeah, I told you, call me. <laughs> and you did. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna, I was going to suggest including the use of a consent agenda in here, but I think we don't need to do that because we can do it on the next page. So go ahead. Okay. Is everybody lastly, okay with that? Yes. Okay. Lastly, in that set in that section, and I don't know how to address it because it just came up. We've talked about in section two officers and duties. We've talked about the chair person, the chair, the vice chair. Uh, but have we talked about the duties of the select? Uh, board member proper. You see what I mean? Yeah. But this is section about officers. It, it is, and their duties. I think the duties are spelled out on the charter. I think that's right. All right, I'm good. Okay. Really, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> okay. okay. All right, okay. moving to section three about the meetings. So if nobody else has anything, I do. Okay. Um, Let's see, this states that special meetings may be called at the discretion of the chair upon the request of majority of three. It also then says workshops may be called at the discretion of the chair. And I would consider putting in or upon the request of a majority three of the board. So, well, the intent of that would be, is what I understand you saying, is that if three or more of us feel the need for a select uh, for a workshop on some subject matter that we can make that happen. Yeah. How I mean I doubt it's gonna come up, but yeah. you never know. That How makes sense. Uh, I don't have a problem with that. How about eliminating that whole part and say um, special meetings or workshops may be called yeah. and eliminate that whole last part. Well except for the fact that the workshops it makes clear are informal discussion yeah. and no votes. That's important. All right. Right, right, right. And and that's an Right, and that's a notice, and then there's no informal action. Yeah, they need to be separate. So, so uh, what I would do is discretion of the chair, um, or or upon the request of a majority, paren, spell out three, same thing as we above. of yeah. the board, yeah, just, comma. Yeah. Just okay, copy the what's same above. exact thing that's up above in the prior sentence. Okay. Yep. Okay. Perfect. All right. Okay, then we're on to. This order, this is always sort of, I don't know. 
I think it's, uh, frankly, I think it's kind of crazy to have yeah. the, the order of the business shall be as follows. Yeah. I, I've never kind I mean, of experienced you know, determination that. Determination of a quorum, you know, it's just putting words in here to, to you know, make it look right. important. I mean, if we if we keep it, then I would at least say the order of business at regular meetings may be or will typically be, I don't like the word will, as you know, but um, but in this case, I could live with will typically, um, and of course, I would like to put in consent agenda here. And, you know, I want the town managers, well, right now, it is up front there. Okay. I, would, I would offer that we need to have a structure to the agenda. Yep. Okay. Uh, some portions of this are required by Robert's rules, I'm sure. Some of this may be required by state statute on what happens and what has to be included in select board meetings. Uh, with those things in consideration, I could support revisions if they were good. I don't know, I don't have a proposal as to what this might look like, but we do need to have a set You order. know, I've got the town charter here, but without taking it out, I do think that some of this might be laid out in the town charter. Mm -hmm. So I guess I don't think the agenda no, order is, the agenda no, is not. The, 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 the town agenda council. is not. No. Yeah. But it, what did the town council say about anything else? I, I know I've seen it somewhere else though. That's yeah, he, really? he looked at so. it. I think so. That was my first concern was that it was going to take a an, a charter change. Yeah. And he said no. It it's only oh because of the consent agenda. Right. Yeah. Okay. And. Uh, I could have sworn I'd seen it somewhere else. I think the I only I, I think in the charter it just says an agenda will be published or yeah. something like that. Yeah, I don't so think I don't think it goes into two, this but, detail. But, um, and I think I mean we have to remember too that this is this is written for a new select board member coming in and maybe a new chair coming in. So there is some I think there is some validity to having an order of agenda there. I, I wouldn't argue too hard with making it a little less than the shall. I'm, right. I would be okay with that. Or but I think having a, a format there is not a bad idea. Um, and also, uh, but you could put in wording such as, you know, uh, you know, <clears throat> unless otherwise determined by the board or the chair, then the agenda shall be as followed. And that allows you a little bit of leeway to change it. Mm -hmm. I would also include in here approval of minutes from previous meetings. I think says, it's there. It just says minutes. It doesn't say anything about approval. It says, yeah. oh. Oh, here we are. Okay. So make that approval. Of minutes. Yep. And I don't mind your language, Ken, that says unless otherwise amended by the board or the chair, yeah. the order of business at regular meetings shall be. I don't mind shall if we put that you caveat little, little at the beginning. There, yeah. Right. Do you guys like that better? Sure. So in the beginning, Linda, <laughs> of that sentence, the order of business at regular meetings, it would say unless otherwise amended by the board or the chair, comma, and then leave it the rest. The order of business, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And then the consent agenda, I think typically goes in after the town manager's report. Isn't that right, Rick? Yeah, I think it can go wherever you'd like it, but I, you know, it, it should go in there someplace. If yeah. we're going to put it, it in, probably should go in early. And the yeah, and the and the board voted to put it in, so I'm I'm on board with the board voted, and that's over. Mm -hmm. But I would say to talk about some of the things we talked about earlier that we should have, a, you know, after the town manager's report section that says consent agenda, and then right after it a section that says items removed from the consent agenda, so that we get. We don't have that issue with somebody who comes about a certain meeting or whatever. Well, or, what about the uh, where it says agenda changes? This yeah. is where you typically would put it, as we were talking about earlier. Agenda changes, including removal of items from the consent agenda. But so my point is that the items that are removed from the consent agenda should come up right after the consent agenda, creating a so space that they don't get dumped down into you know item at the Q bottom. in new business. Yep. What if you, you can certainly I, make I the get, agenda change? I, I gotcha. There, I gotcha. Though. What okay. if we what if we put a, agenda changes at the very end of that section three and then or the other part you could do is you could put the town manager's report between public hearing and minutes okay and then you'd roll right from agenda changes into see I, I was misunderstanding Ken's comment the same way I think you are 
Um, it's not the it's it's not the taking it off of the consent right, it's agenda where the stuff he's goes. concerned about. It's yes. like once it's taken off under F under three F, when does the you know the the member of the public who came to hear it, it does it go all the way down under new business or unfinished business or can it be addressed right there? What you could do actually is you could put in item five consent agenda A, approve consent agenda B, act on items removed from the consent yeah, that's, agenda. That's but that would be fine with me. Yeah. A space. What did we just tell Linda? So, so five, the new five, I Linda, is I noted the time. We'll be I think the new five is consent agenda, okay? And then underneath that is, say a, that again, a. Small a, act on consent agenda. Yeah, act then, on consent agenda. And then B would be act, act on items on. removed from the consent agenda. Yeah, that makes sense. Is that, did you get that? Mm -hmm. If we're going to do it, I think that's uh, yeah. You, that's important. you don't want to pull them out from up here and put them at the yep. end, yeah. bottom of the list. Okay. Yep. All right. So on hearings here, I, I think a lot of this hearing is probably pretty well spelled out in statute, isn't it? But yeah, and I think. Uh, oh, do you see the um, last paragraph on page two? It refers to on the fourth line, however, that formal, it says rule of evidence, it should be rules of evidence. Are you a lawyer or something? <laughs> <laughs> Gee, maybe I am. I <laughs> no, but I pretend to be one when I'm here. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd agree with that. <laughs> what, that I pretend to be one when I'm here? No, the, with her suggestion. <laughs> Okay. I say it's participation and voting. No change on my end. Um, the only thing that I would say here is that. Okay, I guess it's not in. It's actually in the charter. A couple. When I first joined the board, every vote was a roll call vote, and it just took mm -hmm. forever. And and it actually says in the charter that you're supposed to do that, but we made it as a policy of the board to say, okay, we can. You know, we can have, if it's a unanimous vote, we don't have to call the roll, and the clerk can easily record that everybody Thank voted you. for it. And we, and we, you know, but we were having to do that, like going in and out of wastewater. It took forever, but I think that's in the charter actually, so it's not here necessarily. So I don't think we need to change this then. And in the charter, it actually also says, um, and it sort of hints at it here, but the charter is going to prevail anyway that uh, any action the board requires a majority of its, okay, that's, that's okay then, majority of its membership, not a majority of the members present. So if there's only three people here, a two to one vote fails, even if it's positive. Okay, I never mind, see I'm that blathering on about charter. nothing. I kind of went through all of that, but. What, the roll call vote? Yeah. It's in there. It's um, page so. 5C. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Okay. But, all right, well, so we, it's a non-issue. We effectively do it. I right. don't do it anyway, so. Screw the chart. Um, okay, decisions. Uh, section 6. No change. No change. Section 7, annual performance review of the town manager. Now, you know, this talks about a goal-setting yeah. session, and you'll notice we're already... Um, violation. In violation because right. we had trouble getting everybody together. Right. Uh, you know, I just don't know. I mean, it's great to have this say that, you know, we should have that session. Um, well, uh, it could be changed to just say something like target. Okay. Well, you want to try to get that. We didn't get it this year. This is the only year since I've been on the right. board that it's happened. I, I'm okay with a one-off exception. I, I'd leave it. Yeah. Right. Okay. I, another opportunity I might offer, and then this is for consideration, is uh, it is usually customary uh, for people working at this level to also have a uh, less formal but still uh, some feedback mid-year where uh, you know, how are you doing on the goals in the last six months? How are things coming? What extra help do you need? Resources in order to be successful. So the opportunity exists uh, to hold uh, a mid-year review. 
How about something like adding a sentence in the middle here? We have two sentences in a section. Just adding a sentence in the middle. The town manager shall report to the board on goals progress from time to time. I know it's a little, little squishy, but. Um, it you know the thing is, if you have um, if you have a situation where you you want to review the performance of a town manager more often than once, then there's nothing from a personnel standpoint yeah, we can that do stops it. you from doing that. And we have done except that in it the says past. which shall be completed no later a formal written review. And so, in my view, That's in my view, there are two things that I would do. Additionally, the select board shall conduct a formal written review as opposed to will participate in, and that's just a Yes. housekeeping yep. shall conduct a formal written review of the town manager's performance blah 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 comp completed no later than may 31st of each year comma or more often as determined by the select board it may um, work for the group that's here now but this is my this is my concern going forward different select boards different chairmen different town managers there may be a tendency to avoid or otherwise not have proper feedback somewhere in that 365 day window and would it do future boards and future town managers a favor to through the bylaws essentially mandate that there will be a mid-year review conducted I yeah I, I i see your point and uh Lending toward agreement because I think the other thing is you don't want to you don't want to have a written review every month. No, nope. that doesn't allow the town manager to do his job and doesn't yeah. doesn't allow the board to concentrate it, on anything else. Either. I mean, if there are issues that come up, I mean, the board's going to address them anyway. We right? always have the we always have the ability to do that, but I think I think that the mid year review is a good idea. I think that having it be a formal written review might be a little bit much. Um, because I think the form, the formal written review is an annual review, right. and uh, so I think uh, ha having a mid-year review and not specify whether it's written or oral or whatever is probably the way to go. One of the things that I've struggled with um, is the the fact that the goals the the goals become part of uh, a review and executive session discussion, rather than you know how how are we doing on the here's here's goals. And their goals for me and for you, and, and where do we stand on those goals? We often have those conversations in executive session because they're tied to my review, but they're the goals for us in the town, you know, and it's. Well, and I, you know, I can say that a prior town manager would report on the goals in his monthly report right. to the board. We we'll just yeah. have a section of that saying goals, you know, right. like I've started working on. Right car registration or whatever whatever the goal might be and so you would have an opportunity to do that in your um, that, that has always been a little bothersome to me that the, the goals were so almost t like tightly protected in, in, as a part of well, the executive I think it's, session and I, and I always felt like yeah that what, would bother me it's, yeah. it's not that the goals were protected it, it was the, the board's review the, of you right. we can talk about the goals in open yeah, session exactly. there's no problem with that the goals but when yeah. we when How we publish we our goals they're a public document how are we doing and if you want to include it as part of your report or if we ask you you know hey how are you doing on that uh, goal for the west rockport fire station that i'll give you next week <laughs> um you I, know, I would agree i would agree with that um, for this document my thought would be that you get rid of the word annual we say performance review of the town manager the the words that deborah pointed out the select board shall conduct a formal written review of the town manager's performance i would add the words annually which will be completed no later than leave it as it is the next sentence or the last sentence in addition an informal mid-year review uh, will occur and whatever words need to come after that yeah Whoever needs to participate can be spelled out. I mean, that's up to, you know, perhaps the, the chair. Shall occur. Yes, the shall occur and the, and the may, perhaps the, the uh, select board chair is the person that can, that has the sit down and has that discussion. Or the entire select board. I would offer that input from the select board summarized and presented to the chair and the chair provides the feedback. 
I think I would just leave it at an annual mid-year review, or a, a mid-year okay. review will be mid -year, conducted. I'm good with like that, that for this, and how we do it, we work. Yeah, because it may be different. It, different boards will work differently. And, yep. and, but, uh, but, you know, it may be that in one year we decide, you know what, we got to do a written okay. review at mid-year, and in other years we might just say, hey, let's have a get-together, and then we'll have Christmas oh. cheer afterwards. You're saying, in addition, a, a mid-year mid review. Yes, a mid-year review. Well, we already described be conducted. Shall be conducted. Do we say the words informal? I would no. leave it out because All I right. would leave it at our that way it leaves <clears> it at our discretion. We can do what we need to do. Perfect. As long as it's a mid-year review, and, and like you say, it could be as simple as the chair sits down with the the manager and says how are things going and the chair is satisfied and reports back to the board that I conducted the mid-year review and, and I feel things are on track does anybody have any questions perfect we're done does that work for you Rick yeah <laughs> as we're talking about you know yeah, that one that's um, just a mid-year review shall be conducted yeah. um, in, addition, in addition it's after the period at the end of that paragraph in addition comma a mid-year review shall be conducted and then we agreed with the, uh, I think, with the, the sentence that says, additionally, the select board shall conduct a formal written review instead of will participate in. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> and then do we need to take the word annual off of the section 7 at the very top? Yeah, because I you're would, talking yeah. about both an annual performance review, yeah, which yeah, is spelled yeah. out, and a yeah. mid-year yeah. review. Put performance yeah. reviews yes. of yeah. town manager. Okay. Performance reviews in the title. Except on Tuesdays and Thursdays, Linda. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Um, sure everybody's okay with that. Well. All right. Conflict with laws. I no change. I have no more changes. I have no more changes in the document. Yeah. Okay. Neither do I. Good. All righty. Very good. So let's just understand. So we'll get a document back at our next meeting that details these changes and are we going to then go over it again or are we just going to keep... well I think we'll get it in the packet and I yeah, assume you will all have it. typos can I be on the consent agenda no can I recommend that we <laughs> that we pull together you know we'll, there's going to be some review of the um, the last 25 minutes on the live stream we'll pull it together put it together as a track changes and just send it out to all of you so feedback. that you have a chance to look at it and Make say, sure wait a minute, you didn't get this right or you didn't get that right. Send it back directly to me and Linda and not to the whole board. But, you know, if it's just we've missed something right. or didn't Sounds get it good. right, right. Yeah. We, can get, we can get those corrected before at the next meeting. Something to keep in mind for October, Doug, is if, if everybody gets things back to us, there'll be 10 or 12 uh, committee bylaws to review and approve and hopefully and I won't get it'll, it'll come in the pack <laughs> yeah. makes well, it quicker all yeah. we can do <laughs> regarding this next meeting is vote to right. schedule a public hearing for the right. following yeah. meeting anyway we can't vote on it yeah, yeah. so you're, you're a ways away the other policies we should be able to go over pretty quickly I would hope yeah. all right um, Up to smoking changes yet? Yeah, I think so. Proof, uh, change in personnel policies and procedures. Okay, so this has to do with. Uh, no, the, there, it is in there. Yeah, it's in our okay. packet here, and it, we've deleted the. We talked about this previously, I yeah, believe. Yeah, right? we did. Yeah, these are just I, changes. Mr. Chairman? Yep. I move to approve the changes to the workplace smoking policy as presented. Second. I second. Okay. And actually, yeah. we're making changes to the personnel policy. Is yes, that right? Yes. 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 We are. Okay. This is the personnel policy only. Right. Not the town Smoke. policy regarding smoking right. on town property. That yes. is a separate issue that Rick so, is dealing with. I think I heard you move that we made a motion to approve changes to the workplace smoking policy portion of the personnel policy. Let me, let, me, let me revise my motion if I could. <laughs> Here with us, Linda. Sure. I move to approve the changes in the town's personnel policies to, uh, as they relate to the smoking policy, the workplace smoking policy, as presented. Second <laughs> works. All in favor? The vote is unanimous. Um, Mr. Chairman, can I make one comment about the other? policy where it stands 
you know, the, the, the town, the, the, the town, town policy, wide, the town wide yeah, policy, sure. can I just tell folks where it stands? So um, you might recall that at the last meeting when this was, when that was discussed, um, there was an issue about enforcement and Molly was talking, Molly Stone was talking about how you had to have enforcement right. provisions in order to get free signs and et cetera, et cetera. So basically, um, I have had a lot of discussions and emails back and forth with Molly and with Diane Hamilton. And basically, I think what it boils down to is that this board will, at a later meeting, be presented with an issue of whether or not to just do an ordinance and therefore have some kind of enforceability or just do a policy that won't have any kind of enforceability because there really isn't any kind of enforceability um, to do just through a policy. So that will be sort of the policy <laughs> question that will be presented. And one will get um, us free signs agenda. and the others won't. Right. Correct. Right. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so that is something that I will be sending to you as an agenda item. Okay. Thank you. Uh, there's a um, basically a typographical error in our harbor ordinance where they talk about the setback as being 100 feet and then in parentheses it has 150 feet. Uh, the town council feels that the obvious uh, typos can simply be corrected by, by a vote of the board. Mr. Chairman, I move with the review and approval of the town council that this does not have to go back to voter review and approval that we make the typographical error repairs to the harbor ordinance as presented second uh, any discussion yes just the correct value is the 100. 100. The correct value is the 100 not the, not 150. the 150. okay just to, to, to clarify, um, when I talked to town council, I got an email from town council late in the day today. Um, he said that it's, it is because it was that way in the original document, in every document up until the last revision, it's a typographical error, that the town clerk has the authority to change it over. The, how that happens, I still have to work with town council on, but as long as I get your right. approval, we'll work that through. And I know that the motion is out there. I just want to say, as a former Harbor Committee member and current liaison, I apologize for missing this particular issue as we spent months you know, on every letter of that ordinance, and we missed this. After a while, you just look past the Ooh, yeah. boy, I don't know. Okay. Uh, well, <laughs> all in favor? All right. Um, We've tabled the general assistance till next time. Okay, and did, should we state again for the viewing audience why we tabled that? Yes, because pub, uh, public notice was not. Requires a public hearing note. It requires a public notice. hearing with notice, and we didn't provide the proper notice for the public hearing. All right. Um, consideration of appointment of a budget committee member to finish. Uh, uh, Jan Rosenbaum's term, who has resigned. Um, let's see, budget committee members are normally elected, but if it's more than 120 days before the next election, it's my understanding we as a less than uh, 120 days, uh, then it waits. But if it's, yeah, if it's more than a. I have to have a certain amount of days in order to do the nomination papers, et cetera. Right. So we kind of was at one place and then nothing was decided. So it was at the point I could have had nomination papers, but no decision was made. So it went by the wayside. So now this is how we have to do it. But correct me if I'm wrong, the next town election isn't until next June. Right. Right. So and this you, would you, be an appointment just until the June until election. Correct. Right. So we can appoint even though it's more than the 120 days until June? Because I don't have time to put it on the November ballot. No, but you could put it on the June ballot. And right? I will. Right. So this, is, so this just is just to fill out the remainder of the room. Okay. Yeah, until June it. 2019. Got right. It. Okay. okay. So, you know, the, I'm, we're certainly happy to do that, and we probably should if we have anybody that's interested. 
Is what that a, yeah, what am I, I looking at here on the right end? The These are the people that got write-in votes. From where for to the, who? For the, for the June, June election. election. For, for Jan us. resigned after okay. or before. It was too late to get somebody else on the ballot. Do we know if these people are willing to serve? I haven't heard anything. Well, well yeah, no. I, we didn't have enough people that took out papers in June, so Owen agreed to take one position as a writing candidate. So he was elected. Is that correct? He was elected as a write-in candidate okay. with eight votes. So he's... So Jared Cronkite accepted with three votes. Tracy said no, and Bill Chapman said no at that time. Okay. So these are just people who received write-ins. I guess, Mr. Chairman, what is our task here? Uh, well... We don't have it passed. Well, I, th I would suggest that we should, um, given the fact that, according to Linda, there, we've we've we filled all the positions after the June election with people who had write-in votes, and then and then others were, I guess, asked if they wanted to fill Jan's position, and nobody did who had at least three votes. That leaves us with a whole list of people who had one vote or two votes. Yeah, I would suggest that we should put the notice out there that we would like to hear from people who would be interested in serving on the budget committee and ask them to fill out a committee application like they would for any other committee and then consider them at our next meeting. Okay, and, and with the budget committee, we can use that same process, correct? To fill an unexpired term, right. yes, yeah. we can. I like it. We can appoint yeah. um, I mean, we did that with the school board last year because we had a resignation in the middle and we had people express interest and we actually So had where do we put the notice? Uh, press release, press uh, release. You know, or All something right. like website. that, or people listening to this, or <laughs> people who are paying attention to the website. website. meeting at this hour website. probably have some interest in, in the town affairs. And in the we weekly, weekly manager's letter. Yeah. Rick? Yep. Yeah. Um, and if you have friends or relatives. If you, I will say, if, if you're interested in town government, at all, the budget committee and Mark has served on the budget yeah. committee. It's a good place to start. It's it's fun um, it can because be. you huh? it's <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it's a it's a shorter time commitment because it's it is pretty busy for that Very stretch of time in, in yeah. you know February and March, uh, but you do learn a lot about the town. It is it is a good place to start for somebody that is interested in yeah. town government. And you learn a lot from your fellow budget committee members, and you'll learn a lot yourself. Mm -hmm. Then you can. Go for the select board baptism by fire. <laughs> or you can watch okay. all the budget committee meetings by live stream. <laughs> so we'll be interested to hear if uh, anybody's interested in that. Uh, we don't have a wastewater commissioner this time. Uh, liaison reports. Uh, Great parks meeting the other day, Doug attended. Uh, I mean, they all went out way energized, I think, based on. A great conversation. Dave did a great job facilitating it. Uh, they now have copies of their 0603 line item for their budget, so that now they know what they have uh, to play with, so to speak. And they were encouraged to have material back to the town office with regards to anything that they would like to see monetarily uh, put in in their parks budget. And they understood that it's all, you know, it involves all the parks, and that's the, the money doesn't go to one thing or another. But and the other thing, they were having a, they're changing their bylaws to include the names of all parks. Uh, there was a conversation brought up by one of the members about uh, perhaps giving back the Glencove rest area to the state. They probably yeah, wouldn't it, take it. <laughs> yeah, no, they won't. <laughs> it's self for ninety cents, and we take a loss. Um, but it was good, I think. I don't know, if Doug, if I missed anything, but that was just a quick snapshot. Would, um, would and is it appropriate for the Parks Committee to, to weigh in on the uh, talk about the Marine Park events fee schedule and stuff like that? Would they have any? I mean, because I know that's always a, a little bit of a turf situation yeah. down there that the Parks Committee feels some representation for the land part of the park, which is where the events happen, and the Harbor Committee... So I don't know whether that would be a nice thing to do I can, or not. I can send Dave, I'll send him an email just asking him if they would like to talk about that or have input with regards to, um, 
each use. One thing with the parks, you know, when it comes to budget time, is if you, Mark, if you could express to them for them to start thinking about oh. budget stuff prior, yep. getting it into Mike, and then have and then having them show up at the meeting and support it because I, certain people want to cut it out of the budget. Well, I, I did throw Doug under the bus. <laughs> <laughs> I, I threw Doug and I under the bus in saying that we would try to support their worthy goals as best we could. Okay, next. Next. Uh, Pathways Committee continues to meet uh, on a two-week rotation. Uh, two weeks? Yeah, two to sometimes. Wow. Wow. Uh, summer's been a little bit lighter. Uh, but the, uh, you know, I'm sure that the approval loop the board, uh, the select board gave of the uh, spending from last time around was well received. The, uh, there are no exceptions from that. Uh, Jeff and I have a, if you need me, call me, because uh, I can't be at every meeting. Go to the Harbor Committee, a uh, couple things. The Harbor Committee on the last, you know, two meetings ago, sorry, made a round of the Harbor. Uh, and captured a long list of to-do items and improvements, uh, things that needed to be addressed. Several of those were safety opportunity items, uh, some potential compliance items. Rick, I ask if you would to get that list uh, and have Abby and Mike, if need be, come up with a plan and a schedule of what they want to do in which order and by when. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, I have, I'll share a specific example. As you enter the dock, the new dock that the Heron is tied up to, yeah, I'm aware of that one. the gap at low tide would scare you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have uh, to reach over to grab the after rail. After you step over a 10 by 10 in order to do it. So a tripping hazard and a fall hazard is there. That needs to be, that could have a temporary fix on it tomorrow uh, for very little expense. There, second one, there's an extension cord that's running that runs a cooler for the ice cream, I believe, for the Heron by the book. <coughs> if you're gonna have something operating, uh, the use of an extension cord is only good for 30 days after that. Uh, it needs to be a permanently wired thing. My suggestion would be just to move the cooler such that the wire and the plug for the cooler goes directly to the uh, to the outlet. To the outlet, and it just it makes it easy. So there's, but there's a list of 15 or 20 other so, items. Uh, not now that you're saying that, I, Mike and Abby and I have spoken about the items that are on okay. on there. Um, All right, but uh, and uh, lastly, uh, on the Harbor Committee, the. Um, Exception to the ordinance regarding boat length has been received by the harbor ordinance and the exception policy that has been developed. An impact assessment has to be conducted by the harbor committee via the harbor master. Uh, and that is currently in process now, uh, at which point when done and the harbor committee looks at it and all is good, the harbor committee will bring that exception request to the uh, board for review. And with a recommendation, correct? Yes. Now, one thing with the Capital Improvement Committee, sorry to take 30 seconds, but Rick, have you heard anything from Alan with regards to a workshop that he... No, I have not. Could, no, but I think Megan has been communicating with okay, him. Okay, I haven't heard a thing and, and don't know of any upcoming meetings, so... Uh, one more thing on Harbor Committee, and then I'll be quiet. The uh, Harbor Committee just recently, in the last week, had a resignation, so there's another open position uh, on the Harbor Committee. Who is that? Tim. Okay. He's moving. Yeah. No. Oh. Okay. That's all. Okay. The Technology Committee has not um, met, although Rick and John and I have continued to do background work on getting a lot of information together on that, on the broadband issues to at some point bring back before the town and the board. 
Um, the uh, I have been spending, and I say this under the committees because while I haven't been spending a lot of time on committees, I've spent several days working on uh, town policies. As you know, we agreed that I would do that. And it, I have spent several days in the, since the last meeting um, in that regard. So just so that you're aware of the effort. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, cemetery committee met. Uh, we met actually at Seaview Cemetery uh, and looked around and toured and found what, what the committee thought was a nice place for the columbarium and a possible small area for graveside services that could be uh, connected, uh, constructed. Uh, it's nice. It's away from the road, so it's a little quiet. Um, we're going out to the folks who manufacture the columbariums to get somebody to come down sometime soon and, and take a look at that. Uh, and help us with the estimates, and so we feel good about moving that process forward. Everybody was very positive about it. Julie Clement, right? Um, Clement. Clement came from, and so did the other fellow from the Long John. Funeral uh, Home in Camden. Julie's a member of the committee, but uh, John also came and had, had a lot of helpful comments about how it could work and how it, uh, John in particular said he thinks the thing will sell itself. He says he thinks yeah. we'll have the revenue you know, very quickly that people will, will want to get in there and it'll allow us to lift the moratorium on Seaview Cemetery. And I know it sounds a little... I'm not sure I'd say want to get in there. But, <laughs> um, but some people are very, very focused on that. Um, and the, uh, the cemetery committee did review their bylaws and had only one minor change, and they, I believe, have been submitted to Diane. Uh, but, but So Linda has... Those are basically done. Um, so those bylaws will be taken care of. Um, Ordinance review has not met yet, um, and they will not. They typically don't begin to meet until November, so they may not have. We may not have bylaws from them until then. Their bylaws have not been revised for a very long time. That's a group that, you know, they they will say bylaws. What bylaws? Because they they do really really good work, and and they'll they won't think too long about it. They'll just say okay, we'll sign off on them, but but we'll take a look at them. Um, ZBA has not met. I did talk to Bill Napower about that because they haven't met for a while. They actually don't have a chair right now. There hasn't been a need for them for quite a while, but I talked to Bill about having an organizational meeting to get them to go through their bylaws as well. Uh, Bill will get back to me when he gets that scheduled. Um, Legacy Rockport met, and as I mentioned earlier in the meeting, they are looking at the lime kilns and trying to, to drum up some interest. Um, it's not Legacy Rockport's place to to organize a fundraising campaign for them, but uh, they are basically making it known that it's a project that they would be interested in helping with if another organization or person out there could get uh, get some interest going and, and about how to how to deal with the lime kiln restorations long term. Um, ambulance review. Do we have a meeting set up for that sometime no, I soon? I sent out right? an email uh, last week. And I haven't heard back. But I didn't get it, so I don't know the. No, I sent out an email to the other okay. three town managers. Because we need to meet pretty yeah. soon. No, I had spoken to Rick. I think a week or so ago. Yeah, asking when you spoke to that. me, I sent yeah. out an email to Audra and. Um, uh, David. And then what? one more thing I want to mention when when okay. Jeff was talking about pathways, I happened to think about it. I don't know how many of you knew Mac Thomas. Uh, mm -hmm. Mac was on that pathways committee. He did a tremendous amount of work when mm -hmm. I was back when I was liaison. He's the one who did all the grant writing. Got a lot oh, of the money. Yeah. He passed away here oh. um, a week or so ago. His service is on Saturday, the fifteenth, I believe, in Camden. And I just noticed today. Sorry to be, you know, this, but Allison McKellar's sister's service, I think, is it just was published today. It's yeah. later this month at the Snow Bowl, and, and I think it'd be nice if we had a presence there to, to support Allison. Yeah. Um, on one of your earlier subjects. It, it was asked of me the other day by the Sexton, what, what, what's the construction of the lanes down at Seaview? Are, are there supposed to be some roads that are supposed to be put in, or are they scheduled to be put in, or? Avenue 26. At, you know, and that's supposed to be done when? Yeah, right. I'm not sure. He was. This he year? had material on hand. So I mean, it's for sure. this year, though. I mean, or this last year? year. That was. It was supposed to be done this year. Whether I'll, I'll find out from Mike. Yeah. 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 Well, I, that's what I mean. I got a little prodding from. What's the name of that? Yeah. Seaview. Seaview Cemetery. Seaview. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And one of the things 
back to the cemetery, we noticed when we were down there, because with the area we were looking at for the columbarium, there were some people who commented that it was a little wet at times, but we noticed that there was a, a culvert that comes down from Bayview Street that's all plugged up. Yep. Um, and so that's, Rick, you might want to put that on your list for Mike to take a look at that culvert. Um, Give it to Cam and stairs. <laughs> the culvert's ours because it's in the cemetery. Oh, damn. It's, it's, it's water that comes from Camden's Road, but, yeah. <laughs> but it flows through our culvert, so. Um, okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I got one more thing on Harvard yeah, Minute. Okay. I apologize. Uh, Rick, we were going to get a quote for the relocation of the outlet by uh, Andre. Andre. Have you got that quote yet? It seems to me I saw one. I'll check with that with him on that. It seems to me I think we got one. All right. Would that be something, Mr. Right. Chairman, that would be appropriate to send out to the select board once yeah, we I have think, a, I, information? Let me check with Mike. Or I might be mis I might be confusing that quote with another quote, but let me. When, <coughs> when you find out, would yeah. you just right. send everybody a note? Yeah. It was another thing as I was doing my. What was the second thing for Mike? You're going to look the at the culvert, culvert in the, the cemetery. Oh, culvert in the cemetery yeah. that's kind of plugged. And if he's not sure, tell him to call me and I'll go down there with him and show it to him. Because it's kind of hard to see because it's mostly buried. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Midco Solid Waste Corporation, I, um, Owen touched on it. Uh, I think probably the most important thing is that I think the committee seems to be willing to turn some responsibility over to the executive committee. One of the real problems that this group has, this corporation has, is there's a very high turnover rate of the board members. Um, you know, I'm new, I've been going for a couple of months, but people come and go all the time. And as a, an issue that's as complex as the solid waste corporation and the changes that are undergoing, it's it's a bad situation. So I feel very good when we have professional managers such as Rick and Audra Kaler and Dave uh, and Samantha, you know, dealing with union contracts and stuff like that. That's a good step forward. Um, like I say, I'm willing to show up at meetings and participate and try to represent the townspeople. But boy, you get to this nitty gritty. Uh, business work that needs to be done to run that corporation and you need the professionals not just people passing through so that's encouraging uh, keep Rockport beautiful we actually had a very good meeting last week um, very good discussion because I'd had some concerns uh, this committee was originally started to act as a clearinghouse whereby all of the different stakeholders in town but and by that I mean uh, the chairman of the Parks Committee, the chairman of the Harbor Committee, the chairman of the Pathways Committee, the chairman of the Conservation Commission, Mike Young, head of Public Works, could all get together and um, say, what projects do you folks want to have us do and what resources can we share, both human uh, resources and capital resources, to sort of have a concerted effort to make the town look beautiful. And what it had sort of devolved into was is that, you know, someone would come up, oh, let's go cut the brush over at, you know, Mary Lee Park. And that was sort of fine, but it's, you know, all volunteer dependent and stuff, very hard to do that. So we agreed that at our next meeting, uh, all of these stakeholders are gonna get together and we're gonna try to prioritize some projects for the spring and summer of 2019 that can then be passed on to uh, Mike and the town uh, for execution. Um, so rather than try to do the projects ourselves, we're gonna to try to set priorities and, and give guidance and again, where we can share resources and get things done effectively. Does also, that, yeah. I'm sorry, does anybody ever bring up the topic of the town office? The weeds around the town office, they look horrendous. Yeah. And I just, it bothers me every couple of days when I'm over there. Well, we <laughs> Sometimes you, I weed, but we, you know. You, you, can, you and, you know, I mean, grass growing up in the brickwork, the works. Yeah. Not what, Rick? Uh, oh. Doug and uh, Bill Leone came over once and pulled all the leaves. Yeah. 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 Here's, uh, here's, okay, well, here's the, the issue, and I brought this up at the Parks Committee meeting. 
you know, you guys haven't been through a budget session yet. No, I've Just watched them on wait. live stream. Believe me, I, I, I <laughs> and, get it. You know, for our parks, in my opinion, if we were to keep the parks in the condition that they should be kept in, that the town is proud of, we just don't, are not going to have the money to right. do that. Right. So I asked the Parks Committee to begin to explore the concept of, you know, trying to identify a benefactor for each park throughout town. You know, we have people in town that could afford to say, I'll give $5,000 a year to have a professional landscape company come in and do the edging and the mulching uh, and the shaping of the shrubs and everything. Uh, but I just, we're not going to be able to do it with public funds. I mean, yeah. what we're going to end up with, with grass growing up in the bricks and weeds yeah. in the garden. I would right. offer that the so. town office and the um, fire department, police department be first on the list of, I mean, that's where the most traffic is, the most, and my perception is that's where the most traffic is, the most exposure is. You want to have a good looking professional. And, and that's not something that couldn't be incorporated into the mowing bids. You know the groundskeeping. Oh, yeah, it I mean be, it's going to cost yeah, money, but yeah, at least yeah, you know it's. Well, you know, it's <laughs> yeah, sure, we can put its own line item in there, but it's going to cost yeah. money. And and when we start uh, chopping away, yeah. it's going to be interesting to see what folks want to chop. So. Yeah, no, I I realize that, but it, even with volunteers, you know, I just I would just like to have it be on a list when along with the parks and so forth because it just it bothers me. Yeah. Oh yeah. Constantly. Constantly. Speaking, you got to pull up all the bricks and put landscape fabric underneath them and put yeah. them back in again, but that's yeah. going to cost a fair amount. Well, I mean, and even if I agree with that, and even if it's not the 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 grass growing between the bricks, which is bad enough, but just just the two. You know, the two flower beds, I mean, not only do they not have flowers, but we're growing weeds, yeah. you know? It's like a weed Tall bed. things. They're they shorter than they were last year, though. Yeah, yeah. I think, yeah right. I, I mean, the uh, landscaper came in and did them yeah. this year. You did it last year. Mike got them to do that. Well, do it this year. you know, it's, it's an issue. Yeah, it's something we can talk about. Another thing that came up, and I don't give a hoot about this, but um, Marcy Casas, who's not on the committee, did come and she wants us to change the name of the committee because there are other, uh, it was, this is a long story, but uh, Maggie Timmerman originally was doing the roadside cleanup with the official name of Keep Rockport Beautiful. And before we, before I started, is one of my personal goals to set up this committee, I had a long talk with uh, Maggie and she said she had no problem at all with us sharing the name and, and going forward so we did um but i guess it, it it has bothered marcy and she came to the meeting and maggie again told me she doesn't care but since it uh, since i don't care either i think we'll probably change the name just to uh so that citizen is happy uh that's on our agenda next time the investment committee has not met um and the planning board i don't believe has met either I did get a response from oh. Mike. He's he is obviously still up and paying attention to his phone. The, we did get an estimate on. Uh, I thought I had seen something. The power pedestal, uh, doing the electrical work to move the power pedestal would be about a thousand dollars. That's with us doing the earthwork and trenching and and burying all the conduit. But um, if you want i mean you can make a proposal because legacy rockport collected a lot of money on the andre thing and they did go over and that we discussed that in the meeting that i would make that proposal um, that, that that money was collected for andre and this is part of the andre project yes. so somebody it's a good i would offer that, I think that, yep, I can that, do that. rick if you go back to that committee and say it's a thousand dollars you want to do it right I can do that. I mean, I'm a okay. member of that. So you want I to can, do that, Ken? I yeah. can Ken's uh, got bring it, it up, and, and then I'll ask Great. them to interface with you, and we'll see if we can get it done. Nice. Yep. That'll take care of it. Uh, RES is sort of one of my goals things. I'll bring that up at the Okay. Goals yeah, yeah. Show. Okay. Um, let's see. I think that probably wraps it up. We don't have an executive session at this point, so I'll take a motion to adjourn unless there's anything else anyone wants to talk about while we're here. Most sincere motion that we adjourn. Let me think about that for a minute. Second no. the motion. Okay. Any discussion? Is there any discussion? I'll see you no. all tomorrow.
right. Yeah, what's the expectation tomorrow, tomorrow. time-wise? Are we yeah, starting at 5.30? Is it, because I've, I've got two different notices, 5 and 5.30, so. Well, 5 was today. Yeah, but it, it shows on the calendar is one thing, and then the package here is 5 o'clock. This, well, my schedule, let's see, the official town. Sorry, I think it me. was, typically we try to do 5.30, Jeff, so you can, uh, Leave work at your normal time or semi-normal time. Oh. Well, the official time on the town calendar five. is at five o'clock. And where is, are we five. here? Or are we at the Richardson, Richardson Room? Richardson. Okay, five o'clock. And yeah. when do we anticipate finishing? I have guests from out of town. So well, I mean, bring them along. It, this is going to be a long-term <laughs> process. So I think we ought to self-limit ourselves to certainly no seven. more than two. Seven, and five to seven. An hour and a half. Now we didn't have a meeting plan for September 24th, Rick's out of town, so I thought we would have another workshop that night to continue the comprehensive plan, because it's, it's, it's an important project. Yeah. We've got to get through it. Yep. So, yep. Okay. so five o'clock tomorrow, Richardson room. And, and we we'll shoot for 6.30. Right? Hmm? Don't we have an 8 a.m. training? Or is that all of us, or just some of us? It's not, me. not mandatory for you, you certainly are in Oh, I thought we were supposed to be there. That's the uh, emergency, emergency yeah. Yeah. operations. I'm going to go just for fun, but it's oh. not mandatory. Ray had, Ray had uh, okay, I had. I mean, well, if there's one that you was... have to do. No, no, we did it. Yeah. Okay, so we that one. Yeah. No, not the FOIA, not the FOIA, but the. No, 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 uh, we did the. The, uh, the incident down command the thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. right. So I right. thought that 8 a.m. was. Uh, I checked. Okay. Did we adjourn? All those in favor? We are adjourned. Yes, we did.